podcast or just catch up on here yeah, so it yeah, does yeah. it does have it does happen that way should we do oh, this yeah. thing we're Sound with good. the legend himself alan cook <laughs> hi what's up what's up <laughs> thank you for coming down to this unclick podcast yeah, yeah man stoked yeah. yeah stoked to catch up with you guys get back in the the bmx mind of things yeah, yeah. catch yeah. up in your history throughout your career into the it, like into the industry and everything has been pretty amazing so endless stuff to talk about that's for sure i already yeah. know it yeah. yeah there's some stuff <laughs> and uh this is a morning podcast so i don't think the day the dales are actually cold but i don't think we're going to touch them this morning you have a long drive i do yes. i have uh still plenty to edit from swamp fest dennis has, i might have one yeah <laughs> dennis has not much going on yeah. to be honest yeah. i'd have a beer <laughs> yeah. at some point but, but finish um, the coffee first but yeah shout out to dale shout out to source bmx shout out to woodward yes uh, thank we you got to our sponsors. sponsors galore we appreciate them yes. Spon- there'll be commercials later in this thing of us saying stuff but thanks so. to supporting our podcast and yeah having people like alan come down exactly yeah. i've been enjoying it i've been watching them yeah Hell yeah thank yeah. you um what do you do now what do I do now? Um, my job title, I work at Specialized, which mm-hmm. is kind of funny, right? Like back at Specialized. It is, it is crazy. Um, my job title is Senior Marketing Specialist. Senior. At Specialized, which is my favorite. It's like a double. Special Specialized? Yeah. Yeah. I'm special. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's kind of a mix of PR, like new product introductions with media camps, like helping run media camps, um, some product validation. So riding the bikes and like kind of testing them and the the team that develops them the ride dynamics team they try to engineer you know an experience into the bikes and to cater to different types of riders okay so i'm like i i fit in a certain box and that's like before things come out sometimes i'll get to ride it and kind of validate you know yes this type of rider is getting that experience out of that bike like let's make it ship it kind Mm. of thing and then Uh. on the marketing side you know coming up with plans like we've just like coming up with ideas and ways of launching new products and you know, getting out there, things I used to do kind of with uh with local exposure tour. I kinda have I have a tour coming up later in the summer and it's kind of a recreation of that, which oh, should wow. be fun. Okay. Um I forgot about local exposure. Too, yeah. So yeah. Much. Ton of stuff at specialized for sure. But then I've been also been I also kind of stumbled my way onto the broadcast team for Crankworks, like the live Red Bull broadcast of that stuff I've that's been. where i see you more than ever like i feel like I, it's been a lot closer of time since we hung out but it's just me watching you on tv yeah that's been super fun <laughs> up in the booth with cam McCall so that's like an official job yeah yeah you, you got to travel all over the world to do that yeah it started out as like part of the the global partnership was specialized at because we were the title sponsor of the slalom mm-hmm. and that was like part of it is like okay let's make it make it relevant one of the things i wanted them to do was like Okay, rather than just having banners on the wall and like logos in your guys' posts, how can you help us promote specialize as a group of people? Like we're we're all bike riders. Like, how do we promote that? And they're like, well, we'll invite you onto the broadcast team and you can like be up there and talking about the bikes the way you want to or the brand. So they kind of invited me that as a part of the sponsorship. But the first time I went to do it was early COVID. We went to Innsbruck, Austria. And Cam, who's the host, he got like held up because of like the wrong covid test it was like early yeah, covid yeah. so it was like can you do the you sneezed four? when you should have spit yeah maybe yeah. i don't know <laughs> can you do these four these four broadcasts mm. like on a whim and i'd never done one at this point and i was just like i'll never have another opportunity like this even if i bomb it's like it's a resume of some kind yeah like mm-hmm. so i just did it and then then eventually i got i got invited to do it and i'm like on the staff i'm getting paid and stuff so yeah it's cool yeah that's that's super cool that is crazy and it kind of i feel like that almost resonates to a lot of stuff like your career i mean as you said you full full circle going from riding for specialized working for specialized but then even even the haro gig after all that but um i don't know should we start a little bit at the beginning or no not like origin status but but (laughs) when did you what year did you become youngsters i I know half the people listening to this know what he did as a bmx and the other half probably are like i've heard of alan cook you know it's <laughs> yeah. been a long time yeah since- i mean x game you have an x games gold yeah or two i have one gold and yeah. a bronze yeah. bronze and mega ramp and gold and dirt that's crazy and yeah. then so when when did you become pro i guess let's let's rewind it well i mean it was different back when i first started competing you know it uh-huh. was 98 i think 97 98 um the core tour came because at the time i was like kind of just getting back into bmx racing and i was getting real bored of bmx racing because i started out bmx racing did a little bit of moto try couldn't afford moto went back to bmx racing and it was like not enough Mm -hmm. so then i started dirt jump i started riding ramps and then i was at a bmx race in reno and the core tour was there 
And I was like, oh, dirt jump contest. This, this seems way more sick than doing the race I'm here for. So I did that when I was 16. So I guess that would have been 97. But there was no amateur categories. It, you just either did the contest or you didn't. Hmm. And if you made finals, you got paid. So mm -hmm. then you were pro, which I didn't make finals at that first one. <laughs> I didn't. I, wrote, I blew it. I, I, learned, I learned a lesson. I rode to um, Slayer, Raining Blood, and it got me so pumped. <laughs> Back then, you had to pedal at the jumps, and I pedaled way too hard. <laughs> so, who who were you me. riding that contest with? Has you got a couple of names? Uh, Bar Spinner, I think, was Bar on spinner, the podium. Right. Nyquist was on the podium. Nastasia was on the podium. Um, That's cool. They like merged dirt jump contests and racing like that. And then the racers could just be like, I'll try. Yeah, yeah it was cool. Foster was probably in there too. Dude, I remember yeah. there was times where we would be on, on the like, we wasn't even a rolling yet. We would be waiting and they'd be announcing BF for the dirt jumping contest, but he was like finishing a moto <laughs> on the track. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Come on. Oh, we'll just run them last. We'll just run them last. It's cool. <laughs> Too wild. That's fun. Um, it's almost like kind of like Crankworks miniature. Like yeah. Dirt and racing together. Yeah. A little bit of a festival. I mean, dude, I mean, you guys have been to BMX races. If you go to a big national, the amount of downtime there is, is insane. Right. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You only get like a tiny bit of practice even. It's crazy. Yeah. At 5 a.m. It's like thousands of people. <laughs> yeah. It's nuts. I've never been. Crazy. You never been to a national? I mean, for like an hour, so I'm I didn't sure really get subtle. to experience any of that. <laughs> yeah, and you never. didn't touch your bike, right? I mean, I didn't. I was not racing. I never yeah. raced. So yeah, multiply so. that hour by like, <laughs> eight, and it's exactly the same, except for like 47 seconds of a race. <laughs> and then you line up, and you're like expected to do good, but you don't even know how to like the fastest line through the rhythm. So that's why it's they like, all got that stationary bike because that's all there yeah, is. They yeah, they stay warm because yeah. you're barely riding. There's those so things. much. There's so much technique to all that stuff. It's they've. You know, it's an Olympic sport. They've honed it down to every ounce of performance they can get out of it. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then so that's ninety eight, and then you know you're like, all right, I like freestyle. I'm a freestyle guy. Yeah, I started dirt jumping and and riding ramps a little bit, and <clears throat> I guess it was ninety nine. I made my first final at the Cactus Cup, mm -hmm. and back then there were so many brands getting into BMX. If you made a final, you got a sponsor. Okay. Like, it was like sick. I made finals. I'm gonna get some money for being in this contest. But then it was also like, okay, who's my sponsor gonna be? <laughs> <laughs> like it was tr like track specialized. Gary Fisher, like GT. Yeah. All of the, all of the brands were signing everybody. Yeah. Back then, Huffy. Like who else was there? There was so much. Schwinn had like 14 of ev the best people ever on their team. <laughs> like every it was you made a final because they only took 10. You were on a factory team. After so that. who'd you get? It was specialized. Specialized. Okay. Um, I had the first had, final specialized got you. Yeah. Wow. I had I had somewhat of a relationship. <laughs> just boom, straight to the top. Yeah. yeah. It's that's crazy. Sick. That's but that's how it was. Yeah. Then. That's crazy. That's what that. Yeah. If you made finals, because they were just looking for freestyle guys. All these brands. They're they like, needed. We need, we need They're like, here's your here's your fat boy. Because it finally, it yeah, the fat yeah. Boy, <laughs> first bike was a fat boy. It was sick. I think I the a, triangle, right? Yeah. 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 One of the, like yeah, the pit bike version. The um. They were sick. The monocoque brand. The American flag one. <laughs> monocoque see. yeah and and then i graduated high school in 99 and they had partnered up with mountain dew and speed stick for like a summer freestyle tour which my brother was the manager of the tour and i was already sponsored by specialized like when i was in high school i was like getting paid to ride for specialized it was pretty sick that is crazy how'd your Boom, brother you could sell one on ebay for 400 bucks oh, nice look at that piece of yeah, shit and the gold one i never <laughs> i never rode that one though no. how was your brother already the manager of that's this tour so if you go back a few years our whole time racing bmx we were always mongoose kids because of rad mm -hmm. obviously crew jones the whole you know we we loved rad and travis chiprez was the manager of the mongoose team mm -hmm. while we were doing all of our traveling to the nationals and racing and my brother was kind of like co-sponsored by them they would give him frames he had the kits he would pit out of their pit and I was just like the shitty little Grom that they would give stickers to, to go pass out just to get me out of the booth. <laughs> so I like knew Travis from that stuff. So then when Chip Rez started working for Specialized, there was already a connection with our, us and, and Travis through the Mongoose days. And, you know, he was putting his team together and he was making things happen. And at that time I started making finals and I think, you know, I was really open to that was when the bikes were weird, right? And I was mm -hmm. down. I was like, whatever. It's cool. And I, I lived pretty close to the headquarters at the time, only an hour away I, where I was going to high school is from Morgan Hill where the building I work now, which is crazy. crazy. Wow. Yeah. So there was times where like I would get pulled out of, I would get pulled out of high school 
early, like to go to specialize, to give them my, my like opinions on a pair of shoes or like a new colorway or like a helmet or something like this. So that's kind of how I ended up in the industry. Cause I was like learning all this stuff along the way from yeah. day one. It yeah. was super cool from specialized at this point. Yeah. That's insane. And how big you, you was it? Such a full circle. Yeah. <laughs> I specialized <laughs> as a, I didn't know that as a company, like they had, they had TJ Lavin at this point, right? Yep. So they had, they had this full BMX program. And who else, who else was on the team? <clears throat> so at the height of it, it was, so the, the, I guess the main team was TJ mm -hmm. and Josh Hino. Okay. They were like the main, main team. And then I would, I was doing the tour, but they would allow me to fly off the tour to go do contests. Okay. And then I would fly back to tour. And then there was the traveling tour team. What was that? Like shows? Or yeah, was it? yeah. Doing shows, which was John Kauser, Tom Stober, and Jeremy Fanberg. Okay. And my buddy, Jeff, he was like the roadie. He, we graduated high school. Bigger dude, right? North Carolina? Uh, he lived there. Yeah. Okay, but we yeah. went to high school together. Okay. All so, right. Yeah. Crazy. Okay. Yeah. So he was like, he was like the roadie. He was the guy who would help us set up the ramps and do stuff. And he would ride the shows for fun. And, you know, he was looking for something to do after high school. So he yeah. came on tour for six months. Cool. Crazy. Yeah. And then, so this program, it, it ran for a long time, but like, what was, so was there an ever time you r didn't ride for Specialized? Because I was just looking at videos and it was like, I mean, I, I might as well just pull it up, but um, how did I lose my Google Doc already? This is, this, is part of the, this is part of the interesting, one of the more interesting things about the full here circle. Here we go. That, oh yeah, what do we got So, here? said fit bikes right there. Oh, right. that's funny. That's Robbie getting some free play. I think, <laughs> I think fit was on my sponsor list because Robbie was giving me like, I think I was riding chain rings and bars and stems or something. Okay. Damn. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people, we can listen to this real quick. Lee Ramsdale's announcer. Yeah. Look at you. Maybe you have aged a little bit. <laughs> Dude, I, was, I think I was 17 in that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're riding to a lot of people in BMX would say like, oh, you know, if they didn't know you that well, you won X Games Dirt, dirt Rider. Mm -hmm. You've always been very well-rounded. Yeah, I've just always tried to ride my bike. Right? Just did a huge like, gap to ice right after yeah. like a switch, one footed table. You know, it's pretty cool. Yeah, you're always w a all around rider. Yeah, like you rode BMX. Just like riding my bike. I mean, people ask. You know, even now, people will say, you know, what's your favorite trail if it's a mountain bike or whatever. Yeah. And people would ask back then, what's your favorite discipline? And the answer is always the same. It's the one I'm doing in that moment. Right? Yeah, like, that's cool. You know, that's the, that's kind of the, my favorite. Yeah, yeah that's cool because yeah. you made a huge career out of winning dirt. Well, we'll go back. So. What kind of brought the like big time Alan Cook? Because there was a point where you like had a bus and all that. Was that winning X Games that kind of led to like local exposures and all that? Or was there like a lead up to that? You know, like what were the contest series and what was going on to get you to like that level? Well, I feel like we'll right there. Back, we'll go back a little bit and then right. we'll hit that because it'll lead into it. When you asked me if I ever didn't ride for Specialized. Okay. And it's funny because there was this period of time. I'm trying to remember what year it was. It might have been the end of. I don't know. It was like two th end of 2000 or 2001, I think. Okay. I can't remember exactly which year it was. It was then. It was like 2000, 2001. We were told, you know, oh, yeah, your contracts are up at the end of the year. If you haven't heard from us by November, you know, you're free to start looking for other deals because there was always this, you know, first right of refusal clause in the contracts. And <clears throat> November came around. I didn't hear anything. And uh, I didn't even know at the time. Cause this isn't like, you know, this is a while ago. People weren't just like, Hey man, just want to let you know, I'll shoot you this text. Like yeah, it yeah. wasn't, it wasn't happening. Yeah. So Travis actually left specialized and there was no manager of all of the athletes. So I like did when I didn't hear it was cause there was no one to do the work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I went on and I, you know, I signed a contract, a pretty big deal with, uh, with Schwinn. Mm. Oh wow. And then like two months later, it went out of business like right before i was going to start riding for him like oh, right wow. before it was actually going to like start showing up in schwinn stuff they went out of business crazy yeah so the first contest of the year which was a cfb in florida at kona i rode a hoffman so i hit up i hit up chad kagey and i was like hey man i want to ride your frame i don't have a bike sponsor and that's what i rode at that for those first couple of contests that year was just a hoffman bike but that actually ended up being one of the best things ever because <clears throat> like maybe a month or two later um mike senior called my dad mike senior the owner of specialized called my dad 
and he explained the situation on what led to me not being on their program anymore. Mm -hmm. And he was like, hey, I'm really sorry. What happened with your son? It was a miscommunication in the business and, and this and that. The time to get a new contract together is not there. I want to pay his year salary personally. He wrote me a personal check for that year salary to ride for them. And at the end of the year, I got a proper couple, like three or four year contract. And that's kind of when things So they paid you up front. Off. He wrote me a personal check for the year. Did yeah. you put it on black? I did not put it on black. No. I went to the contest. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. Um, And then so did Schwinn honor your contract or were they just like... No, Bankrupt. it was super early on in yeah. the whole thing. So didn't even was get like, going. Oh, yeah. Welcome, welcome, Curtis, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry, we have a puppy now. That's all right. I like dog, <laughs> dogs be dogging. Yeah, dogs be dogging. Curtis down. Oh, it's wet and smelly too. Yeah. I wish you could smell, yeah. smell on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, that, that's coming soon. <laughs> yeah, smell a podcast. Season four. Yeah. Wow, so crazy. So. I mean, even if Schwinn would have worked out, though, that probably would have been I mean, good too. But so there's like, even that'd be scary, another, though. There's right? even another layer. So like, wait, what? Once the once the Schwinn thing fell apart, before I heard from Specialized, I signed a contract with Nerve. Nerve. Yeah, it was gonna be it was gonna Stephen be Murray. me, Stephen Murray, and Mike Laird. Whoa! I signed the contract, and then because Stephen was winning so many contests, and they had this like match your wins thing, <laughs> they were like going bankrupt, so they just didn't honor my contract. Like they just stopped answering my calls and I, I, when I was like, Hey, can I like get some bikes? Like, or when's my first check coming? Yeah. They just like, they fucked up on that answering. contract with Steven. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they wrote him a contract so good. Yeah. They didn't think he was going to win everything. Well, they were also, <laughs> they were also running ads with uh, bike tires and like condom wrappers. So it would really yeah. do, do, do well for yeah. me. Either. They weren't doing good. They were ahead of time. Good. Remember that? <laughs> what do you mean? You have to buy it on the internet? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who was Nerve? What, where did that come from? My, my brain is not. I don't know the. The inner that shit was random. Things about it, but I was stoked because, dude, I was, I was, I was dealing doing yeah. contract negotiations with the lumberjack, dude. Yeah, Gary well, Ellis, yeah. my old hero from ABA. You all of a sudden though had like three big contracts. Like people wanted you to ride for them. So you were so, hot shit. Yeah, so that year, that's that's where I was yeah. getting at. Like, what made you hot shit? Obviously, you're really good, but there had to be like were you there wasn't video stuff? parts at that time. So, so that year, that year when Mike paid my salary, mm -hmm. there was video parts. Sorry, I knew but. I was getting a contract at the end of the year and. The whole time, my whole life, even till now, everything's motiv been motivated by what's going to keep me on my bike, right? Yeah. So I had a whole year that I was already paid. I knew I was getting a contract in a year. I had nothing to lose. So I started sending it. Yeah. <laughs> and I started landing stuff. And I started doing good. I started getting a lot of podiums. You know, I got a lot of fourth places at big contests. Mm -hmm. um, and, what, what were the and contests? You're young, you, had CFB, so you had CFBs at the time. X trials, X games. Yeah, I actually won. Gravity games is around yet? No. Yeah. Yeah, Gravity there was Gravity yeah. games. Yeah. CFB, uh, Core Tour was still happening. DK it, Dirt Circuit was still happening. The triple, ASA triple. ASA, dude, one, one year I, one year Dirt I. Dirt was huge. I wrote an article in uh, BMX Plus for this. This year I, um, I rode as many contests as I could. Like sometimes I would do two in a weekend on opposite, oh, sorry, on opposite coasts. Like I would do, a park contest and one like here at a CFB and then I would do park and dirt and then I would fly to Florida and do the dirt at the DK dirt circuit. Crazy. So like on a Sunday. So you do that yeah. on a Saturday, then go like you Sunday. Could you could red eye to the East coast. So that's I did 27 contests in one year. Damn. Wow. I just made so that's I what you were doing. That's how you're hot that's shit. You, <laughs> I was just, I was just doing stuff and I yeah. was always, I was always in the finals. I was never always the podium guy. But I was always in the finals, like kind of from the starting of doing contests to when I. And another thing stage. is you're super young. So I was, you young, know, all yeah. the people beating you are probably older. So they're like, this is the future right here. Yeah, I was it's obvious. I was 17. So crazy. So basically during that time, I didn't ride for specialized. Those like four or five months or whatever it was. Um, the contracts or the sponsorships with Mountain Dew were always through specialized. Like Sp specialized was sponsored by Mountain Dew. Mm -hmm. But when I didn't get re-signed by specialized the people that were managing the mountain dew stuff were like no nah, we want you so you're on mountain dew now and we'll we'll pull that money mm. <laughs> so we ended up getting paid separately and getting our own contracts with mountain dew but then when specialized came back now what we do you mean double we? downing there was other downing. people getting it too yeah i mean there was other people on the team that the same thing happened to. okay yeah like i think fanberg the same thing happened to tom stober the same thing happened this to. had to be like probably the first drink deal in bmx yeah for sure yeah maybe i mean except probably. for like like maybe Tang in the 80s. Oh yeah, there, and there was like there was like Sobe with McNeil. 
Sobe, yeah. yeah. Some weird off that was the same, same dude i love oh, yeah i love hey i want to say i love so i was addicted I to Sobe. Sobe. i thought Sobe was sick yeah it Sobe. was so thick it, it was, was weird yeah like strawberry it was like, milk it was like, like the, the milk yeah, it was like the milk it was like the milk <laughs> but you thing. chug it before you go ride bad idea. <laughs> Oops, <sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> um that's that's super interesting i had no clue like first off you were riding that many contests at that age because i i mean I started following you around when you were winning X games and stuff. That's when I was starting to watch BMX. So yeah, had no clue about like how you got there. So in 2001, I got fourth in dirt. This is X games. X games. Yeah. I got fourth in dirt. First X games. No, my first X games. Oh, my first X games was a crazy story. This is is you. You didn't (laughs) like sleeves back then. Did you? Nobody did. Nancy didn't even wear shirts. (laughs) Well, Nancy didn't wear shirts. Gun show, baby. I don't. I don't think no about, sponsors don't think here. Look like, at how much wood is on the dirt jump contest. Flip yeah. bar. Oh, it's Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck it. Jim what B. were all those other dirt mounds for? <laughs> yeah. Those, those are, are the motocross. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you passed all those other ones. Oh, flip, flip bar. No, no flip bar. No footer. That was sick though. So it was just two jumps, four pack comp. Yeah, it was very wet. That's how you could fly from one very country wet. to the other real quick. And you didn't have to practice. It was just two <laughs> jumps. You're like, I got my tricks. So Let's no, do this. Don't do at that point, huh? uh no that was all over my jersey the man the myth the was legend it? i didn't have the helmet yet oh yeah it's probably like jerseys was, were bigger than helmets back then that was pre-helmet yeah. Yeah. yeah okay so what what's a funny story about first x games oh, before yeah. we move into the 2001 yeah so for, first x games was in 2000 and i was there because we were doing demos close by and mm-hmm. then we got brought there to like help run the booth the mountain dew booth during, at the thing but i happened to be like fifth alternate for dirt and people fifth like alternate. something crazy <laughs> like that yeah. but it was in my hometown because it was san francisco uh uh-huh. and so i was like whoa sorry we can fix it oh it's in spanish oh no nice. well you never know what you're gonna get well on youtube <laughs> no so i didn't i didn't get in for dirt because i was fifth alternate oh because i was there. probably okay but then like l- legitimately one hour before the park contest they were uh steve swope came up to me he's like hey do you want to ride park Hadn't mm. touched the course, hadn't done anything. He's like, yeah. Because they ran out of alternates like, yeah, for park. You were the you're ninth there. alternate <laughs> for park. People were just getting smoked in practice. I just, I just don't <laughs> think people came. What? I think like the list, oh, most okay. of the list wasn't there. Yeah. So if you're like seventh alternate. alternate and you live in Europe, you're going to be like. Yeah. And I just shit. happened to be there. Yeah. Okay. So I was like, yeah, I want to do that. Hmm. I didn't have my bike or my pads there. So like Travis runs to the hotel, gets my bike and my pads. I'm riding Joe Tizio's bike around the park. I'm like, Ruben's sick. I like that gap. Uh, Dave's sick. I like what he's doing o- over there on that wall ride. I'm like, I like this guy. So I picked like five different things, six different things from different riders and just like linked it together in 30 minutes on someone else's bike. And then my stuff showed up and I did my run and somehow pulled it and somehow made finals. That was my first X Games. Wow. <laughs> yeah. My parents, like I called them, like they left work and got there 15 minutes before. Oh yeah, because in San Francisco, yeah, so your parents crazy. were there and everything. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. My dad you kind of fell into it on boots. accident, but it's also like what you said earlier is you kind of always just found a way to ride your bike more. Yeah. And you're like, sure, I'll try Park I've X always, Games. I've just always put myself in the position to be there if an opportunity to ride. Was Honestly, you know, I've funny, always been very similar because that's kind of how I got into Park was I just, I went to do tour because I was like, oh, I, could, I think I'll do better in dirt. Just tried Park randomly, you know, and yeah. ended up doing way better in Park. And I was like, sweet. Now I could ride two things. At the that's the mental side of it, right? You had no expectation. Yeah. You just let it ride. Yeah. And then I was like, fuck yeah, I can go to these things and ride two courses instead of just dirt the whole time. Ride every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and then sick. it tripped me out because you always did dirt in Park too. But then some guys would just do Park or just do dirt. And I'm like, there's so much time to, you know, that you're, you don't get to ride. Yeah. But now that now I'm older, I'm, I'm seeing like how they were focusing on one thing. But I'm like, you guys aren't fucking riding all day. What's wrong with you? Yeah, you had a lot of energy when you came on the scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you guys ever compete against one another? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Do tours. 10 years at least. Like, yeah. What was your first thought? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. I remember yeah. We, we were friends really quick, though, because I remember I, I still remember an elevator ride me, you and my dad took like going to the athlete lounge and the, the first one I like actually competed in Baltimore maybe yeah. but you just said a bunch of cool stuff to us and yeah, I still vivid, to, vividly it was remember you guys out yeah like going through but you know because being here and like just at that time I was living on the east coast so I was like pretty detached from the west coast BMX scene mm-hmm. we were just like hearing about it at the time you know because it's like we're not on websites all the time we're not checking things this yeah there wasn't much of that <clears throat> the the volume video would come out and we would like get a vhs and watch I'm like oh man that kid's sick and like, <laughs> we would get and then we met you and you know you were chill too so 
we weren't we weren't that nice to everybody <laughs> yeah you're really cool i mean yeah why you, why'd you look at me I, I i'm trying to i'm trying to share my time no i'm just sorry. thank you people. that's very nice of you. Uh, some people just, no, like just funny because, the no because it was uh it, it was the because i live with gary and sure and it was like you got you had problems with sure sure was talking shit oh, yeah? or something like that we, we had the sidetrack real quick. Well, dude, we had, so there was definitely a time period where you were like the cool guys of the East Coast, though. You know, like that's why I was like, damn, Alan Cook's like friends with me and my dad all of a sudden. Like, he, this is so cool. You know, I could already just being super young, I already knew like you had a crew. Like, you would go to the contest and you were like friends with like that was a the crew. point. That was the point of getting the bus is I got tired of flying to all the contests by myself. Uh -huh. over all of these spots i've seen on props or all these yeah you were like crewed up and you guys were riding the whole time i thought it was there would so be like sick. 10 of us and we would just look on the map and find a sit college campus that we had seen on props at some point yeah and we would go there on the way to the events so when we got to the events we were like prime ready yeah to go. that's sick yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a crazy mentality of these days because now everybody's chilling you don't ride anything before the event and all that stuff like serious seriousness of it where you guys were having fun with it and enjoying the process mm -hmm. the more the more my bike felt like a natural extension of my body, mm -hmm. the better I would do, the more fun I would have. Yeah. So I would just try to ride as much as I could. Yeah. Very uh, true. As uh, much as my body would let me <laughs> as injuries come and go. There, yeah. was, there was definitely one event where you were beat the fuck up. And, and I remember being like really impressed that you rode. Was there one that was like, that stands out to you? There's a couple I, that stand well, you out. just like, got. I think you got like, you just got bodied in one event and then you stayed with it and rode a different event and you were just like that's probably utah utah that was probably utah oh uh, yeah you had cuts all detour. over yeah you yeah, were you knocked your looking. tooth out maybe that's, that's what few, it was and you still and you still rode part Dude, I, finals i, I ripped, that's the one that. I, ripped, I remember that now i ripped yeah. my nostril yeah off of my face yeah you got <laughs> fucked up and then you I had to like sew them back on and you wrote whoever it. got like 14th because i think they took 13 or 12 was like yes i'm gonna be in the finals for park and alan oh, showed no, that's up. a different one that was i dude oh my god okay he's like i'm funny. riding <laughs> that, was, that was a different one actually all right well then tell the so tell the dennis one and i'll then, do i'll do top three but okay. i'll give you a synopsis of the two i'll go yeah. into detail on the one he's talking about all right. <laughs> okay so riding hurt number one was that x games that first one my breakout x games okay so the weekend or yeah the weekend before i cracked my heel doing a photo shoot thanks adam booth he asked me to do, do it, it, do it he again. asked me to do yeah. it again yeah. oh yeah magazine days <laughs> no yeah. no yeah. Just, it, everything happens yeah. it's all good but so i cracked my heel one week before x games and i couldn't i could couldn't even walk yeah and I, but i ended up figuring some stuff out and made it so i could ride and then in dirt practice on opposite tail up i just got my weight off you know it happens sometimes you get your weight off and then you just like you get that like whip around and i bruised my back so bad it was pinching off my sciatic so i was getting like lightning bolts down my legs so I was like on tons of Advil for my heel. And every time I had to ride before I would go in to, before I would put my pads on and go ride, I'd have to go to medical and they would do this, like they would grab big ice chunks and do this deep tissue massage and they could get it, the swelling down enough to where I wasn't getting that lightning bolt thing. <laughs> and then they would wrap it super tight. And I had basically two hours that I would, could, could ride Function. before it would start locking up again. So that was happening. And somehow I ended up fourth and ninth. <laughs> And that's 2001 year that was 2001 yeah Crazy. So that was that was like that one stands out but yeah then and then the other one the salt lake one i did superman sea grab flip on the oh, first yeah. big set and just like it was like a, a big set that was one of the ones that uh mikey won okay i think the last one that mikey won so okay. you know i was always like kind of turny and hippie mm -hmm. yeah so superman sea grab flip the first one and like a little bit on the back so i was like trying to turn to get to the next jump mm -hmm. but my front tire was not on the ground and then i just like faced into the into the ground i remember teeth out and everything but i did the next day ride park i think I it was park full, finals i put a that wasn't finals no. that one i just because i needed a few points to stay in top 10 because remember there was top 10 uh -huh. overall uh -huh. okay yeah but, you came in with a full face yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't get knocked out or did you i did yeah mm, but dude different time yeah they didn't they didn't crazy they didn't take care of you back then <laughs> that's not a, it was just no one really they didn't know it's yeah. not even that or, long well, ago they knew, they knew but we just didn't care I there guess. was no hollywood major motion picture dude, or billion one time gutler got yet one yeah. time gutler got so knocked out when they like they did like a oh. a run where they're like ryan gutler before the, contest the intro started. run when he did they, the front they, flip. They did intro run he got knocked out so bad put in the ambulance and then he came out of the ambulance and won the whole thing after like full remember that you know 
You know, that, yeah. that, would never that, that is, stu- that was never stu- stuff of legend where that it was like, legendary. he was cocky and it was like front flips were not, yeah, not a problem. Yeah. Not, you, uh, you know, he did them all crazy. the time, but they weren't like, that was the first know, year of chilling I was watching that on TV. Now. There was only like two people that were doing Yeah. That, and know? he did a front flip in the intro run, <laughs> like just like where he's supposed to run through and gets knocked out. Yeah. I remember him saying at breakfast the next morning when we were watching the contest on TV in the hotel, that that was the first time that he had like. Like he knew he had one, but when we were watching it, he had no recollection of that happening the night before. It's crazy. That That's so insane. crazy. Yeah. All crazy right. sidetrack. Googler would be okay. Googler, if you're listening, get a podcast with you soon. Yeah. Because yeah. he's got good stories too. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Yeah. We've Untold. Yeah. <laughs> he's got some good ones. Um, but the one that's the one that you're talking about was Denver Dew Tour. Denver Dew Tour. Okay. So yeah, it was park practice. Um, there I was trying to flare this gap. It was like a quarter wedge to quarter gap and I was going to flare it. So I was really focusing on that. And there was this big like 14 foot wedge box to jump to get the speed for it. So I was just, my mind was ahead of myself and I probably hung up on the wedge like that much. And it just like wiggled yeah. my bars and I crabbed it and I fell straight like into my bar end. And it just like these teeth gone, Bucky elastics over on the side. Remember how those courses were elevated? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. He's like on the concrete bit and he's like, I found one. <laughs> Fuck. And it like it, it was on the box before the flare. So yeah. Yeah. Just like, like a wedge to wedge, yeah. basically. Yeah. I was just like eyeing up and I just was not paying attention <clears throat> to the thing I was doing. And yeah, you weren't tense yet. You were just like, yeah. 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 Fuck. So and then so, and then you rode and you kept So that was when the craziness started. So I went back into the medical room. One these two teeth were in half and like the nerves were exposed. Mm-hmm. This tooth came completely out. And in the in the medic tent in the back or in the the locker room or wherever we were in the stadium, they tried to put it back in. Cause I guess if your whole tooth falls out, you can just shove it back in. Mm-hmm. But he didn't. Okay. Well then, so he put, so they shove it back in and then I go to the emergency room to see a dental specialist to see like, Hey, can you help me? And I'm in the waiting room for like five or six hours. And I keep having this dream that I'm, that I'm eating food. Like I want to eat food. So I keep like biting down and I'm like, ah, I keep waking up. Yeah. And then after five hours of sitting there, they're like, the, the emergency dental people are on strike and they're not going to come for you. I'm like, <laughs> Sweet. it took you five hours to tell me that. Yeah. So then at the time, DC team manager, Dwayne Taylor, uh, he drives me like a couple hours north to this dentist that has agreed to wait for me because they're closed. Yeah. I get there and he's like, yo, your tooth is not pushed in enough all the way. It's like kind of hanging out like yeah. dangling. He's like, I can try to get it back in, but there's a blood clot behind it and I have to push it and try to get the blood clot to squeeze out around it. And at, at this point, I had so much Novocaine in my mouth because of the, the exposed nerves. <laughs> yeah. You're like, no, and Novocaine like, wasn't hear doing you. anything. <laughs> yeah. So the dude like boot like comes up behind me with the, the pliers, boot on the armrest, and he's just like, he's, he's shaking because he's pushing so hard and I feel it and it makes this like pop noise and my tooth goes the rest of the way in. Uh. But I still have these exposed nerves. So meanwhile, this is like a whole day later, right? I haven't been able to drink any water <laughs> because I, it's like the exposed nerves. I've yeah. not really eaten anything. I've not really been able to drink anything. Um, ice chips, I think, is what I had had. So the next day is park, right? And I'm like, I'm here. I got to try. Like, w- and, and going back to the dirt contest the night before, um, Ernesto Fonseca, who's a professional supercross racer, mm-hmm. he had just uh, suffered a spinal injury and was paralyzed. Mm. And he was staying at the Craig Hospital there in Denver. And his first like public appearance was that night at the dirt contest. And I've always been a huge fan of Ernesto Fonseca and Moto and all that stuff. And w- during the dirt finals, one of the like, I don't know, one of the athlete managers for the do tour came up like, hey, Ernesto's, Ernesto Fonseca's here. He wants to say hello. And I was like totally taken back by that. I was like, yeah. damn, that's so cool. Like, so I like wrapped with him a little bit, finished the contest. And I was like, damn, that was sick. So after then fast forward, like, well, again, 48 hours, you fast forward. I've gone through all this mess and I'm like, I'm, it's my mouth. Like, how could I not ride this contest when I'm able? Yeah, yeah thinking of his position yeah, you know exactly so i go out there i i get a run together i'm like super dehydrated i'm trying to get fluids in me but I, it's it's really hard yeah. and it, i think in an hour i get a run together i go out for my first qualifying run and i'm 
I'm doing it somehow. Like it's happening. But as like, you know, catfish is on there, you've got 10 seconds left. It's like starting to go dark. <laughs> like I'm starting to pass out while yeah. I'm finishing my run because I'm so dehydrated. I finish my run. I basically just sit there on the course, like kind of collapse, you know, like <laughs> I can't keep going because I can't see. I'm like passing out. So medics run out. They take they, my vi- yeah, on the course, on the course, like after my first qualifier. Whoa, run. I wasn't there for this. This must have been the year I didn't ride it. Uh, yeah, Denver was only the first year. I think. Maybe you just didn't realize like, Maybe. at the time. Yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't like a, it didn't seem like a huge deal. I don't think that seems people. crazy. If you were passing it on the course and the medics are running out to you, like without falling, but you know how it is. Like, <laughs> like, I wasn't like, like, like oh, I wasn't honest. playing it up, you know, I was just like, it was, it was happening, but I yeah. don't think like people really understood that. Yeah. I, couldn't, I was like actually passing out. True. Um, so they take my vitals and they're like, yeah, we need to get fluids in you now. So they take me into the back. They put an IV in both arms. <laughs> I'm and we're watching on the screen. The rest of qualifying happen. Scotty goes down. Somebody else goes down and I'm like still in there because I was in the first group. Yeah. And I think I I think I was in like sixth or seventh out of the first group, which, which is, is like, like yeah, borderline. They I'm were probably not going to make it yeah. right outside. But people blew it. And I think Alistair was the last person that could have bumped me out. And he like he crashed something or he blew some big manual. And I was like in. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, shit. And they're, <laughs> so they're like, so like, this just keeps going. I'm in the back. I have two IVs. I have an IV in each arm. There's people squeezing the bags of fluid yeah, to get it into my, yeah. get into me. I can feel like my Can face. you still not drink water at this point, really? Because it's Because, yeah, the out. nerves, it was like too painful. And at that point, the IV is the easiest way to get the fluids in, your, yeah. in you. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, this was why I was. It's crazy that this was only like 15 years ago or whatever, because I feel like now, you know, like, don't ride. Yeah. You know, it's just so, but yeah. back then it was this like, go for it, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. Your but teeth it, are hanging out of your face and you can't but, drink water, but go for this best 60 second run you could ever do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it also comes from so where, where we come from. Though, yeah. Right? Like yeah. think of what our parents were doing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Every 15 years, so much changes, you know, yeah. put some simple green on it. It'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I was, but I couldn't like, I couldn't keep saliva in my mouth. That was the worst part. Cause like your I lips could, are super uh, swollen at this time and stuff. Too, oh right? yeah. This is the one that I remember you. I remember you, I remember seeing you on the park course and just being like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, like partially impressed, partially like he's a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, <laughs> no, those are both fair assessments. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Like, and like, he's a lot tougher than I am, you know, like but I had that motivation. Possessed you know? idiot. Like, you can go a long way. Being yeah. a possessed idiot. <laughs> I had that motivation. Yeah. I couldn't like, I couldn't, I couldn't do that. Yeah. So I couldn't keep slept. So I'm drooling the whole time. So I have a hotel, <laughs> I have like a hotel rag in my pocket. So every time I stop, I'm like wiping drool off my face. Like, yeah. Anyways, I could feel my feet and my face like filling up with the fluid and mm-hmm. i'm like how do you know when it's enough and they're like you'll have to go to the bathroom instantly and like sure enough it was like boom okay like, yeah i gotta go to the bathroom like that's and then crazy. I was full and usually remember how due tour had prelims one day and then finals the next day uh-huh. it was like it was like one hour later so i had to <laughs> no. get i had to go right back out there what <laughs> yeah and then you won no um. even, even even worse dude. it gets even worse it gets even worse <laughs> in the within the first 10 seconds of my first run Tuck no hand or a quarter pipe, miss a hand straight back on my face. What? Oh my God. And the two, the two teeth that were broken and the nerves were coming out, they also had gotten pushed back really far, which the doctor, he, the night before had just like branched them, fish hooked them and straightened them for me. I re pushed them back when I crashed in the ten, first 10 seconds of that first run. But I, I just like, before I could even think At this point, it, you're so out of it. You're not even catching your hands on tuck no hand. Dude, like, I, I felt <laughs> so weird from all the fluid getting yeah. put in. I felt like I was like, just, dude. I, you're still going for it though. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> it was like Alan Cook in like a fat suit, but it just filled with saline. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, dude. I was pretty big back then. Anyways, I had so about seven years of celebration winning that X game. So. Yeah. <laughs> if you would have had a contest the next day, you probably still would have tried to ride it. Dude, I don't Or you know. probably had to drive your damn bus home. Start making your road trip home with all your friends. You probably rode the whole way. We did drive home afterwards. Yeah, you had your bus there. That so you there. fall into the first 10 seconds. And so you I fall in the first tec- 10 seconds. I'm on the ground. And before I can even think about it, I just reach in and I straighten out my teeth. Like, just before I could even think about it. <laughs> Savagery. <laughs> yeah, so at this point, it's like Laying there war. On the like, yeah, what yeah. else? Who yeah. cares? Yeah. And dude, and I'm, so I get, off, I get off the ramp and I'm just like, yeah, dude, I feel so weird. I can't, I cannot ride. Like, yeah. This is ridiculous. <laughs> And I look up in the stands and I see 
Ernesto Fonseca, he's back to yeah. watch the contest. And I don't know, I'm not trying to like use his misfortune to make this story funny or better, but it's like that cliche thing. Like, you know, his, his injury was like kind of mid chest. So yeah. his upper body is like limited yeah. body use. And this was early on. So he's certainly in a much better place, but he gives me the, he gives me the fist after the crash. And I'm like, I can't not. I can't not. I yeah. have. To, I have to go back. Yeah. I have to go back in. That's yeah. not funny. It's like inspiring. That's like, sick, where dude. you're like, dude. Yeah, it's like a movie scene. Yeah. 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 And yeah, it was super. It was super emotional. Like obviously getting injured and going through all that. You have. You know. You you, you get some sort of buildup. Like I definitely remember. So I did my next run, but I took it easy. Like mm -hmm. I think I ended up tenth because other people crashed. Mm -hmm. Um, but I got through it. But I do remember like being under the tunnel like in tears after that just like from going through that experience yeah like, wow that was crazy just yeah, after it's finally whole, like, done 72 you just hours, like, yeah it's too much holy shit dude. too much that's a hell of a story God, that is that's so a crazy <laughs> from like my outside looking in and just seeing you on the deck and just being like he's fucking yeah what he's insane. really going through but yeah. he's just like this dumbass like, yeah <laughs> crazy but, but that's the thing is like you're not gonna be in those places forever obviously like look where i'm at now I'm, yeah. I'm not there but yeah. i know for a fact i did everything I could do to take advantage of every single one of those opportunities yeah. that were given to me, like yeah. being at that contest. And you an made it through that. And that's a priceless experience to go through that much shit, you yeah. know? Like, yeah, that was one of my, like, one of my, it's like warrior status. Yeah. You know, like if you're looking it's at prices to gain that much, like life experience to do that, like it's gnarly and everything, but like that story just, yeah. it seems fake to 99% of the world that would listen to us. We're like, yeah, we see people do stuff, you know, yeah, people, yeah. some they're like you're, that's an insane story still, but we kind of understand it because yeah. of BMXers, but the rest of the world, they'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Dude, are you lying? <laughs> like just making stuff up. Yeah. The, but that's a real story. The perspective of hard is a little different. I think. Yeah. And yeah. when you're doing all that, it's in, it's in front of a stadium full of people too. Yeah. There's like 10,000 know, people like, there. Yeah. yeah. TV. It's not just like live, with, live with your TV. homies. Yeah. yeah crazy pushing your teeth back in your face and just like <laughs> ernesto giving you the thumbs up like all right i'm still gonna do one more run after all this beating oh man <laughs> all right so are you what we missed winning x games there because you had a good you know you said you partnered yeah. for seven years after winning x games so that kind of put you in this have a bus local exposure do tour we'll get to all that but like yeah winning yeah. x games was kind of a peak yeah first. i mean that definitely solidified a peak, but it was like a pinnacle moment situation are you are you living in greenville at that time when you win x games or have you no, uh yeah okay. so i had All moved right. i had moved there the year before and that's really what sort of catapulted the the the, pr the previous year when i got fourth and ninth mm -hmm. is i had moved or no what was it I'm trying to remember it's, it was so long ago no you're good that's what it was is before that first x games when i got when I got random in ninth alternate and made the park final, I had moved to Greenville one week before that mm. and like got tail ups on lock. And that was, I tail up to the big box and that was my big trick. And that's kind of what got me in. And I, I had moved to Greenville with plans of living there for three months. And I was going to move to Austin for three months. I was going to move to Salt Lake for three months. Cause those were like the, the BMX towns. That's America where the, the shit time. was happening. Yeah. yeah. And then make my decision where I wanted to go. Cause at the time I was living in Huntington beach and I was driving more, to ride than I was able to ride. Uh -huh. So when I moved to North Carolina, it wasn't, we didn't have a plan to stay there, but I ended up being there for nine years. So that year after I kind of did well, got all those big contracts, I did the best I could to capitalize on those, those opportunities by having those sponsors. And that's when I started getting on podiums. That's when I started winning. That's when I started being like, like I missed, I didn't win the core tour overall by one point which would have been sick because that year it was on Venice beach <laughs> and first place was a geo tracker. <laughs> and I had, I had made a bet with Mira that I was going to, um, I was just going to start as my celebration. I was going to start it and drive it into the ocean, <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but Nyquist got me by one point. <laughs> Fuck. Um, I would have got fined like your whole year's oh, worth yeah. of winning. <laughs> yeah. you got to find another geo tracker. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's true. For sure. Um, what, did you say, sorry, I was kind of, I started clicking th through the ProTown video, but the, did you say why you moved to Greenville? Was it literally just like everybody was there? It was like undeniable that you should be there? Well, at the time, Colin McKay, oh, I totally forgot to mention Colin McKay as part of that main specialized team. Okay. Mm -hmm. sorry, oh, sorry. wow. I'm sorry, Colin. I'm sorry. I didn't realize you But were. that's, that's yeah. why I had yeah. moved to Greenville because he had blown up on the scene 
and he was living in Greenville and, you know, I talked to him a bunch about it and I was like, him and Bruce Chrisman were living together in an apartment and I think Colin had to go back to Australia for visa issues because he could only be in the country for six months back mm -hmm. then. And then I think <clears throat> Bruce was moving back to Woodward and their apartment was available. So me and Scott Wirch took the apartment. It was like a whim when we moved there. Oh, crazy. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, and that was kind of the first wave had already gotten there. And then this is the beginning of more outsiders moving in or what was the scene kind of like there at this point? I think, I think you could consider like, yeah, it was probably the second wave. Cause I mean, first wave was obviously Mira moved there. Mm -hmm. There's that. And then there's all the VB locals and those people that were there. But then it was like the Colin McKay, the Bruce Chrisman. There was a couple other people that Colin Winkleman had moved there. So it was like Lee and, Ramsdale and Nyquist had just moved there, I think, too. Okay. So it was like known that like, yo, half the people in the finals are living in Greenville. So we should go there. Yeah. And yeah. then I remember one one Gravity Games, we had nine out of ten. <laughs> so it was just a session. Yeah. It was like all of us Greenville boys and Asada in the finals. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. And then. um, Yeah. People. Is it called Pro Town? Pro Town. Yeah. Yeah. Losey's um, video. For Losey's everyone video, ignorant yeah. to like how it crazy is. Greenville was. This is a good documentary that yeah. Mark Losey made. Yeah. It's about why it was what it was. This early ra day. random town in America that just had some of the best BMXers in the world yeah. riding together every day. And you guys had. Everyone had a back, not everyone, but there was tons of backyard ramps. You had a sick one and then two warehouses, JC park, yeah. all this good street to ride. It was yeah. insane. I remember going and visiting and being like, this is, this is like one of the funnest places but to dude, ride. This when one, I, when yeah. I moved there, town. Yeah. when I moved there, all there was, was the, the mini ramp in Nyquist's backyard, the vert ramp in Dave's backyard and JC park. That was the only, oh, really? that's there. pretty crazy. So when I moved there, so why were people gravitating there? So Just is this. I guess you got to watch the whole documentary, yeah, but it's on there. I moved across the street is from this? the skate park. And, and you did it just there. on a whim too. Like you were like, I'm just going to go try it out. So yeah. you were one of the first people to do it because there wasn't resis and foam pits and warehouses. We didn't yet. have any of that stuff yeah. yet. No, it was just a cool place. Oh, there you are. <laughs> uh, I was, that park was amazing though. That's probably like, like the Claremont of the East Coast. Yeah, like one of the this, best parks That's ever. Nyquist, right? That's Nyquist. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I'm losing the audio here, but um Amber. what was the what was the good like the good and then was there were you put there when it was like the divide or what was like the session started separating and it gets like too big and then <laughs> yeah i mean there was definitely a divide at one point yeah because so yeah if i if if i was like one of the first you know eight people that moved there there was this like big influx of australians that came in after that like big influx like 10 or 12 or even more started moving there. Well, I can think of Gootler, <clears throat> but who else? But it was like Tui was living there for a minute. Tui, oh wow. Um, like a any and every Australian that came in there, like Corey Bowen lived there for a while. Okay, he lived with Josh Harrington. Oh wow. Dilwad lived there for a while. Like all of them, mm -hmm. all of them lived there at, at one point, and they were all killing it, right? And and then when investments started to get made in riding spots, when people started building their own private warehouses. You know, there becomes a thing, you know, it's a natural thing like, oh, I've built this facility and these guys are using it to better themselves. And now they're going to they're going to take my nut. You yeah. Know? Like, yeah. It's a real thing. Or also maybe like I heard you'd show up to your park and it'd be crowded. And you're like, what the fuck? I just spent a million bucks on this park. And it's like more crowded than JC yeah. Park right now. Yeah. That was heard... definitely a thing with Nyquist because the, you've been obviously you rode there. So, uh -huh. you know, like you need the space to ride that whole thing. Yeah. Yours was always more segmented. Uh -huh. So you could have multiple sessions going on at one time. And but you yeah. were one of the rare guys, a part of both crews. Yeah. I kind of always just floated in the middle. Uh -huh. Like I've always, I don't know. I've always just kept There's only a chill. few of you guys. It seemed like, like maybe Harrington, but he rode the unit more, but. There was only a handful of neutral guys. It was like Mira team or Nyquist team, yeah. according to the documentary. And yeah, I mean, I never people. and the Nyquist podcast too, and then yeah. and listening to yeah. Nyquist talk. Yeah, about it. I never really like. I never had keys to either place, but I was always tight with everybody that had keys. And were I you in the sessions? Were, were you in two group, different group messages? Did group messages exist? Group messages didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> group messages Just didn't exist. Cell phones. <laughs> no, we had cell phones barely. <laughs> <laughs> it was house phones. Dude, like, I wrote for Boost Mobile. That was like one of the best sponsors. You've been right? sponsored. Yeah. Yeah. Been sponsored. yeah. Um. So were the sessions different at Mira's than they were like training sessions at Mira's and fun sessions at Nyquist? Like that's always the perception outside looking in. You know, I think for sure there were times where it was like, 
I'm going here with this agenda, but it was always because this is about to come up. Mm-hmm. Like X Games is next week. I need to learn a new trick to make sure I can get into the finals. That's how I learned Superman secret flips. Mm-hmm. I had that pressure. I'm like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to figure it out. Um, so that was definitely a thing, but it was combined. You know, was, Would you go learn that at Mirrors or Nyquist or both? Uh, that one, because I was not as good as Nyquist at riding vert walls, I would go to Dave's to ride the foam pit more oh, his foam because pit was I better for you. You could, cause you could sprint at it. Uh. There was a 10 foot quarter and then like 40 yards, but Nyquist's, you know, it was a little tight in that vert wall. I just could never quite get as much speed as I wanted. And I think in the beginning, Dave's might've been a little bigger, his resi. Mm-hmm. And it seemed like it. I think footage. it might have been a little bigger. People and I seem just, to go like way bigger on his resi. I always just had it in my mind the more time I have, the easier it'll be. For sure. So I'd always just kind of gravitate to the bigger stuff. Yeah. And the first sets are way bigger than those resis, anyway. So it's yeah. Like, yeah. I think yeah. a lot of people don't even realize that Nike was had a foam pit because they like kind of kept it. I mean, it was, you just well, never yeah, it was kind of tucked in the back. Yeah, yeah. You never saw it. The resi and the yeah. foam were tucked so in the back. It's, it's kind of funny with that perception. Like I said, outside looking in. But then I, yeah. while I said that, I was like, oh yeah, Nike does have a foam pit. Yeah. But so, if you go, but if you go back, before people had those facilities, um, you know, we were doing, we were, we were having fun and we were competing against each other and we were training all at the same time mm-hmm. and gambling usually. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> like, what I was going to say. You were neutral with both the, the groups of people, but you're also kind of like the, the head of let's have fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> and it's funny, like one of the people, main organizers of the fun in Greenville. Yeah. And like, it's funny sometimes, like when I look back at those times, it stands out in my mind for sure. It was some some cool times to be involved in the whole situation. Like yeah. one of my people say like, oh, what's your biggest accomplishment? What's one of your like biggest memories in BMX or this or that? And I have this like, it's definitely a top five, but it wouldn't make sense to the other people. But it was me, it was, it was Mira and it was Darden riding at Nyquist's ramp. So it was a six foot spine mini with a four foot sub mm-hmm. box. And it was like, okay, whoever can bar spin manual the sub box the most times in a row has to buy or it was a contest basically see who could bar spin it the most times in a row and loser had to buy dinner that night and i'm like great rob darden like you yeah, know tech king, control yeah. tech king bike control and mira he obviously could do whatever he wanted but bar manual the sub box it was like yeah just bar manual sub box yeah. and back in i'm gonna tilt it so then i see crandall it. hit it like 18 times so <laughs> you have like you have about 15 left so. now i won't hit it all right all right <laughs> She get a prize um, for the world record. Right. Yeah. Just just bar to manual and then back in. And just circle and do it again. Just circle that's air, a sick do challenge. it again. Yeah. And then you but that's like the, they're that, heckling you. But dude, that's like and I I beat them. And that stands out in my mind. Like, that's cool. <laughs> I still don't know. I do I was locked in. I don't know what happened. That day was just on. Yeah. Like, I'm not missing these. Yeah. It's like I bowled one time in high school bowling, I bowled a two seventy three, a two seventy eight or something. It was like nine strikes in a row. My next highest game's like a 160. <laughs> like just, I was locked in. That just happened. Just even like bringing that up. But that, just but the that sessions stuff makes in you so much better. Yes. Like yeah. the people you're riding with, you're riding with Mira, Nyquist, and Darden. You That's know? why like Just on there. normal backyard sessions, like finding someone that could bar manual that sub any other place would be hard, you know? Yeah. But you guys are, who can do it the most? Yeah. <laughs> and I got lost? free dinner. Who lost? Uh, I think Dave lost. Damn. Yeah. So we went he was big. Probably like, we went big. <laughs> the best person who could have lost. <laughs> yeah. No way. Um, are there those sessions there, are they like were they as like cool and progressive like as people always imagine them? Yeah. Like yeah. I learned <laughs> yeah. I learned more tricks in games of BMX than I did in any other single situation. Mm-hmm. Like I probably learned more tricks in games of BMX than in a phone pit. Like yeah because everybody we all had our different strengths right and we'd get in these games of bmx and people weren't holding back so we were all learning yeah and we were all figuring these things out but i mean you know at that level everybody is capable of winning there's a mental mental piece to it Mm -hmm. and that's where the biggest thing was is that i'm learning all this stuff and i'm getting that mental boost like yeah I'm, i'm with these guys and then i show up to the contest all the same guys yeah yeah and then i never felt like i was like an underdog or anything like that after I moved to Greenville because yeah. I felt like I belong there. I rode with them every day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, favorite favorite place to ride there? I mean, you have JC, when, you know, at its peak, you had your ramp, JC, uh, Mira, Nyquist. I don't know who else had ramps. Oh, at that point. man. At that the, point, John Beathers had a backyard setup, yeah. like a box jump rhythm thing. 
Um, there was Justin Bland who had a really sick ramp. Okay. He was a little bit outside of town, but Googler had a backyard ramp too. Googler had a couple backyard ramps. Yeah, couple, couple backyards. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, favorite place to ride? I mean, that's tough, right? It's yeah. like, would you just circulate? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was would, it rare to ride two places back to back days, or did that happen? No, it was more like you'd get in a rut. Like you'd ride okay. here, you'd ride here for a month or two, or. You'd ride here for a month or two. It's or so crazy. Whatever. To think and about also, that. there was like yeah. you know ten really good spots to ride. Whether it was warehouses, people backyard, or JC Park, and there was different crews riding all of them. Yeah, dude. And at one point, Fucking before they crazy. logged the horse, we had a sick trails? set of trails. Like Stephen Lilly and Colin McKay put in time and built like proper red clay dirt jumps, and That's it was perfect. sick. What an epic! Like you know, one of those things that timing made this city just yeah i think Darden sickest put in a place. lot of time out there too i better mention that yeah he better, <laughs> he better. He be sitting at home like motherfucker <laughs> um well, so how many Darden. years to, in total were you there did you buy you bought a you bought a house and everything? i had two houses there yeah two houses yeah i lived there for nine years yeah. nine years wow that was a long time longer than three months that is longer than three times <laughs> you <laughs> never months. left after the three months that was it there was no no intermediate the second day i was there i signed a one-year lease <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah um let's talk about local exposure yeah well i was gonna say that, <laughs> let's talk about colin because i feel like there that's a huge part of colin winkleman mm -hmm. so you did so colin i we don't need to show the van clip but the van clip was that was in greenville right no that was actually at pastrana's house i was at pastrana's house. yeah oh, it yeah, was during some pastrana contest that he had all right it was like a wild stunt event type yeah thing. maybe it was on mtv or something yeah I don't know. yeah so set the set the framing because you guys end up you guys end up doing it and you do it with nate too right yeah okay oh yeah we had we him. had wessel there yeah yeah wessel was helping us build it we were obviously much more methodical about it yeah 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 so so colin had so the van stunt and this was what was so great about colin that's why i always every every time of the year that swamp fest comes around i remember colin like he would be the he would be the king of Swamp Fest. Yes. For sure. The Grand Marshal. We used to do those parties yeah. very similar just, just for fun. Um, but yeah, sorry. Sorry, what were we talking No, about? just uh, just set the tone of what the van stunt is. I guess I could oh, yeah, the van I guess I could I could put it I was trying to find the uh it's the, go the go kart stuff originally was the was the where it came from, right? Yeah, that's how okay. it started. So he he would always do some kind of crazy stunt. This is remember this is height of jackass time too. So he'd always do some crazy stunt for an ad and this stunt we built a launch ramp on a go-kart and i drove the go-kart at him he was just not moving just just barely balancing and i drove the go-kart right at him i forgot about that and scooped him up and he did a flip and just landed flat yeah, where, yeah what is that in yeah i remember that it was a photo dude it was a photo no it was geez. probably a film photo yeah because nah, i see i feel like yeah. i've seen the footage and it might so be in his crazy. props interview it might be in his props it's interview nuts, you're going fast yeah fast enough i had to floor like, it because the first the first time like the first test ride where he just like jumped he almost landed on me because he went backwards a little bit mm. yeah this is a this is an amazing props interview with the actual the game show with, with yeah. lee as the yeah <laughs> <laughs> so it's the original podcast <laughs> yeah right <laughs> there's so many <laughs> elements of calling yeah i don't know if for sure or not if it's yeah we'll, there, we'll but... just click through it's all right so the go <laughs> so the go-kart the, the video game clip too um yeah it doesn't look like it yeah so he obviously you know you get away with one thing you want to elevate it so for this travis Just, pastrana contest they basically were letting them do whatever they wanted and he bought a panel van which is like a like oh, a bread sorry. truck or a uh like a bread truck or i don't know you could like a delivery vehicle if you will and he put a lip on the front and a landing on the back and same idea but now you have a landing and it's much bigger and they had the the ramp actually is like dragging on the ground as it's coming towards you so it's making it's like a it's like a monster coming after you yeah. when it happens it's like screaming how yeah. did the lip not hit the should ground? i play should it I play was the, on the ground. should i play the video yeah everyone's Doesn't seen matter. it you okay. can play a video yeah, I don't know. I, which one the this Colin, is, this the is Colin's video. The van. Yeah. Well, here, let me. Oh, I can set it up for you. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. It's like two inches off the ground. So, yeah, you can see. That's a. Is that the. That is a huge lip. That is a big. That is a big lip. That's he a went. Six he went and big. a half, seven foot lip. Yeah. <laughs> so, did you guys do this going slow at all? Uh, or was this first first attempt? I was actually not there. Oh, okay. this was their first attempt at it. Yeah. They went. And watch. This is where the. Yeah. Yeah. Brutal. 
And in that crash, you know, he shattered tib fibs, yeah. feet, broke his back, broke both wrists. That yeah. was kind of the end of the situation for for Colin being able to be the bike rider that he wanted to be, which yeah. is a super bummer. Yeah, yeah. But there were some lessons learned with that situation. So then when we recreated it, we did it as a tribute to him. Yeah. You know, like yeah. Oh, you guys did it. Yeah. I never saw we, that. We did it on think. a on a stunt junkies episode huh. on yeah. Discovery Channel show. I never saw that. Fucking stunt junkies is impossible to find. Because Disney owns it, bro. Cable. Dude, it's a Discovery Channel thing. They have the synopsis it's, online. It's I tried to fucking I have Disney Plus because I have a child. Searched it on there, searched it on Discovery. For, I I spent a solid 20 minutes looking on the internet. What year this, do you so. guys think this was? Because it's the helicopter flip or helicopter flip, helicopter ice pick is on there. Yeah. And and this. And I can't find either. Motherfucker. What yeah. year was just this? Just for me, guys think. Yeah, it's just for you. Uh this was 2004. Okay, so this is probably oh four. Mm-hmm. It's sad because I feel like if it was twenty twenty four, they probably would have healed him pretty good. You know, just how far it's come in twenty years of medical shit. Yeah, like I mean, he did he did get to a point where he rode his bike. Yeah, but he couldn't like ride his bike. He wasn't yeah. like there riding sessions. And what it was is the bottom of his feet had these bone spurs, and obviously you're putting weight on your feet, and it was so hitting it, it was hitting these nerves. So he was having like bone spurs removed and things like that. And it was slowly getting better over time. But the thing that was missing for him was his outlet. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was that was the real the real bummer of the situation. And, you know, he was he too young to not be riding. Well, know, he like had a, too much you know, good energy. He had a rough he had a rough upbringing. Yeah. And he also suffered from bipolar. Mm, I didn't know that. disorder. No. Yeah. And, you know, it's 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 a classic situation you know like his his outlet was riding bikes and kept was, him kept him feeling good and there was times where like because i'd been on trips with him like big trips in in australia and things like that you get to know people when you're on the road and there was there was episodes you could say where like it was like just aggression that didn't make a lot of sense and that was the bipolar yeah and he had established that and was on the on the medicine doing the doing all the things post injury um and then you know is that the first time he kind of came to terms with that he was bipolar yeah after the injury yeah i think it was i think he i think he knew before that but i think that was the first time he was like managing it okay cool and you know those meds don't make you there's other side effects things that don't make you feel good so you know you i think what what happens to people in that situation obviously i don't know for sure but you start to feel good and you want to feel good all the way so you stop taking the meds Mm-hmm. It's, the, it's the classic story with the meds that are supposed to stop suicide the number one side effect is suicide yeah because when you stop taking them for whatever reason it ramps up for Your whatever reason, ramps the, up the withdrawals it just like yeah it's an uppercut and it was a lightning storm you know he was he was having some some troubles with his relationship had been feeling good was not taking the medicine and that became the option to take his life yeah, yeah. crushing yeah R.I.P. Yeah. to yeah. a legend. Yeah. yeah. It was definitely a loss for everybody. Yeah. 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 So there's two parts, and I think we get to the good part of it, is that you recreated it as a tribute to Colin, and then you guys have which one came first, the the van tribute or destruction? What's it called? Destroyer Fest. Destroyer Fest. Destroyer Fest. Destroyer did, Fest were these parties. We did, it come, did it come first? We can we can play this in the, in the Protown video. Yeah. Destroyer Fest was like a, it was a thing that we would do annually. Before Colin like passed, four. yeah, and he was like, he would. Oh yeah, he was in charge would, of him. We would have, he loved he, him the most. We would have meetings. <laughs> he would have schematics and like draw <laughs> these things. People need to be more crazy with parties. Have yeah. meetings for your parties. Don't just have a Friday night party. Yeah, like, you gotta, you gotta. If you want to make it memorable, you gotta have a committee. There was a committee. <laughs> yeah, people got jobs. <laughs> this, this is motivating. We, can, we, can, we can enjoy it. Let's enjoy this so we can people can get the. Uh, Dude, we would go to the local impound and we would talk the people that own the impound into like so there would be cars in there with like ten thousand dollar impound fees, but uh-huh. they're like shitty little cars. So we would talk them into flat betting the cars over to Jeremy's house and we would have our own destruction derby and then they would take them back. We would just <laughs> no one's gonna buy them anyways. They're just then they would just go recycle them. Uh-huh. Yeah. We would we would we would do it get them for like two hundred bucks or something like that. That's sick. But the riders made sure to celebrate his life in a way that Shout out to Losi. Yeah. So before Colin passed away, he invented this thing called Destroyer Fest. AKA Swamp Fest. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, dude, there's the similarities are there. Yeah. Yeah. Redneck party. Everything that will make a redneck laugh. You know, tons of beer, 
There's one of the one of the impounded cars we borrowed. Any kind of burnout, even if it's gonna make a smoke show. We we ended up making flyers for this. You know, in my best. <laughs> There's fifteen thousand kids at the school, by the way. Fifteen thousand. <laughs> What's the average age of you guys at this point, would you say? Probably 22. So your college student age. Yeah. That's crazy. That's why, that's at a one college of the reasons town. why everyone stayed I, there. I remember that. He loved planning it out. He loved, I mean, we had committees, <laughs> you know? Like, you're, you're in charge of the, of the pool jousting. You're, you're in charge of getting the car here, you know? Like, and then Colin wanted to do this huge slide. Uh, Whose house was it at? His house, Bamberg's, yeah. Jeremy had his big backyard. And, uh, How's he doing? He's doing good. Is he still in Greenville? No, he's no. not. I think I haven't chatted with him in a, quite a while, but yeah, he's uh, he's got a couple kids. Nice. Yeah, he's living in the Midwest again. Such a good rider. The front brake control. Yeah. Never had. I never had that. I yeah. tried so hard. When he died, Josh came to me. He's like, "You know what we need to do?" And I was like, <laughs> "Dude, look at the lip on the water slide." <laughs> <laughs> this is this is his celebration of life party right here. <laughs> is that your friend Jeff that you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, that's Jeff. And Doug Darden's beard. <laughs> That's Jeff there. That's his truck. <laughs> <laughs> I love Mira's face on it for a second in that. <laughs> yeah, we would do like pickup truck tug of wars. That was, <laughs> was that one of Colin's inventions too? It was, yeah. Yeah. yeah he was the first one to do that, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing was is there was always the next time you know whether he was doing a stunt or riding a contest or playing in the destroyer fest you know it was, it was always bigger and better and always satisfied so i don't think he would have been satisfied. that was that was post post, post jump, jump stunt yeah. yeah rest in peace yeah so one of my favorite riders growing Ooh, up look at that Dang, nope, nice, yeah, nice caught that. that was a good. That was a good pause right it there. Probably huh? keeps going too. Yeah, so um, if you guys uh, want to watch that full video, it is on our channel. Um, just search it. So, um, Pro Town. Yeah, Pro Town. Yeah, yeah. Good. Um, sick. So, how long after Colin passes away do you guys decide to to redo the the van stunt? Um, good question. Um, it was a couple of years. Yeah, because Stunt Junkies, I think, came after Colin's okay. van stunt, and at this time, so when I that year when I got fourth and ninth in X Games, that breakout year, mm -hmm. I got an agent at the time. So I started getting all these opportunities that you normally wouldn't get, you know, like Boost Mobile sponsorships and like, you know, going to this X Games skate park grand opening and getting paid five grand to sign autographs for for a couple hours and like ride the park. It was crazy what the agents could. Sounds bring great. In. Yeah. yeah. Free money, free money was fun. I wish it would come back. <laughs> got to write twenty-seven contest. <laughs> now I got to get back on it. <laughs> yeah, but so so my agent would like kind of find me things. Yeah, yeah. And then um and then so you guys, you, you said Wessel wasn't involved, but like how did you how did you approach it? So the conversations with those those shows is the the director would just call me on the phone and I would explain to him my idea. Okay. And he would then I would like hear back from my agent whether they wanted to do it or not. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was just and then they produced everything. Yeah, it was like, everything. is this the same one as the the Alistair Witten like upside down grind? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, same one. All right. So they produced all of it. Yeah, they did everything. Okay. They just like were using us for the ideas and as the stuntmen. Okay. All right. Yeah. And then uh it went well? It went well. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> it worked. It was scary. Dude, it was scary. Like the only other person Were you the one who did it? Yeah. The only other person who who did who rode this setup so we bought this 15 passenger dodge van and welded a metal k a metal like roof on it which was the top and it had these like fans out so we made the landing was like i think 10 feet wide we made it much much safer mm -hmm. than what colin had done that okay. thing was 
scary. Yeah. And I don't know if you noticed in in his yeah, that clip, thing would have been scary. He was like without rolling, it coming at you. He was rolling yeah, downhill. How he was rolling downhill. So yeah. this is what we this is what we learned, kind of how we figured it out. So we set up the we set up the truck, the van with the lip and the landing. And I just pedaled and jumped it a bunch of times mm. with the speed gun there. So I knew how fast I was going uh, to clear the jump. Yeah. Right. And then we did, we did. So then we were like, okay, if I'm standing still and the van is going the speed that I'm going, it should work. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But then we also did some math on feet per second on how, what that speed was to calculate, to make sure the van would still be there by the time I came down. So we timed how long I was in the air on a jump cross-referenced it by the feet per second at 22 miles an hour or wherever it was, was mm -hmm. did the calculations and were confident. Okay. I know that the landing will be there when I come down. I'm not going to do what Colin did Yeah, because yeah. when he came down, the van was gone. Yeah. 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 And he fully compressed into uh, the lip and yeah. like shot him up. Yeah. Shot him up. That was, yeah. His shit's so crazy. That was, it looks like it's going to be so chill. And yeah. Then, boom. He's 15 feet off the ground that was his first attempt too he never jumped the, the ramp he he jumped it not moving but that was the first time the van was moving so did the, who and they had no speed and they were gonna go it. faster i heard too so, like so that was supposed to be the slow attempt right yeah so here so yeah. so here's the thing the van wonder, was going the correct speed but his speed was too fast. he was moving and this is something that i figured uh, out that i figured out when he did the go-kart he was sitting still right when you did him with the go pretty much yeah he was like with almost the not moving yeah. and i remember having a conversation with with him about this and he was saying that like dude it's it was intense like there's a there's a car driving at you to run into you what's your first instinct if a car is driving at you yeah get, get out of the way right yeah. so there's a car driving driving at you but there's all a, a lip and a landing dragging the ground so it sounds like there's a monster driving straight at you but you have no perception of how fast it's going because it's coming straight at you yeah and it's getting louder and it's getting louder. And like at the last second, you realize how fast it's going and it hits you and you kind of have this weird, like, you know, it's not the same motion to it's do like a, a jump. You know, when you jump, jump a box jump, you pedal at it, you reset your cranks, you push in and you launch off. So it's, you don't have any of that. So it's completely weird. So the first time, and I remember Colin saying that like his, he knew his mistake. He pedaled is what happened. So as this vehicle yeah, he, so like the adrenaline kind of made him pedal at it well the nerves of this vehicle yeah driving at him and all the noise and all that stuff the last thing you want is to not get on top and you're not moving so you're thinking in your head every time i've ever flown out on a box jump i've been going a certain speed yeah oh you so don't there's want to this case weird, the top of it you don't want to just get scooped up and ran over by the vehicle mm, yeah so he in he, having this conversation a, yeah, he identified I that never, that i think as i think mistake. visual that makes visually a lot of sense. visually it has to be a mind fuck so it's coming Dude, towards yeah. you, you and can't then tell it's like, how fast and then also i feel like it's also coming towards you so you have this like brace effect in your body that you don't realize so like that's why, like why he like collapsed into it was that it yeah. was this weird well though your body your body position just standing there and your body position before you go off a jump is completely different yeah yeah and he was a not in the body position but b the the like the anxiety or whatever the like panic of the thing driving at you he took a couple of cranks and that's when he was going way too fast and shot shot way up in the air and by the time he came down there was no nothing to land on okay. yeah so makes I, it I, makes so much i remember sense. i remembered that and i went through that same experience the first time i jumped it i was like i wanted to pedal so bad because mm -hmm. i was like oh my god this thing's gonna run me over and I like fully collapsed into the lip and just like fell onto the top, the deck. Mm -hmm. And then that was, I was like, okay, we'll start working it up. Go faster, go faster, go faster. Yeah. Crazy. We, we made it work. I wish we had the footage how, of that. Yeah. How many, how many attempts? I don't think I ever saw that episode. We jumped it. I think I jumped I never it seen three it. times. And then the first flip I did, I cased. Yeah. And we did it again and I cleared it. Crazy. This podcast is brought to you by Source BMX. Officially the world's biggest shop. They run the one of the best jams of the year. Mm -hmm. They have a distro in America and in England, so they are oh, worldwide. And one in Germany. And one in Germany now. They're just growing and growing. They have one of the sick, maybe the sickest team in BMX now all of a sudden. And they have uh, what, uh, I mean, I think this feature is pretty incredible on the site is the bike builder. You can go in here, you can build it off of pros bikes. They have Smiley's bike, they have Stark, Garrett Reynolds. They got Rayford, Mills, and then, you know, Kink Build, if you're looking to do that, Custom BSD Build, Street, Park, Trail, and then you go ahead and go in here, 
and uh, you can modify it and change your frame That's out. Cool. Change. So their website is high tech. It literally is. That's so cool. um, you go ahead. And they got and everything. So look. if you don't got a bike shop with everything right by you, here's your online bike shop. They deliver all over the world. Mm-hmm. Best so, prices, best deals in every part. Shout out to Source BMX for sponsoring the podcast and being a huge supporter of our BMX from the beginning. Since day one. Yep. And uh, now a word from... It's kind of crazy that my dad broke his bike. <laughs> he broke it? <laughs> and he rebuilt it. Yeah, that, that, that happened. I did. I did do that. So shout out. Shout out to Source. Shout out to Woodward. Shout out to Dale. Shout out to Cannon Appleby and his busted nose. Thank you guys for supporting shut the podcast. You. Shut up, you. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Bug. I love you. I love you, too. All right. Bye. I guess, I mean, circling back, well, we can't find the van footage. I'm, I'm, I made he really did it, though. He's not he Yeah, lie. I made a note. It'd be cool to <laughs> see if we can find it before it. Yeah, it was a cool moment. In, so. It was like, it was also kind of like a, like a, um, like a cap to the morning process, right? Like yeah. It was myself. Yeah. It was, uh, you know, Wessel was there. Mm-hmm. Um, Mike Laird was there. Jeremy was there. Um, you know, there was there was a bunch of us. We were uh, my buddy Gator, who helped me dr- used to help me drive the van mm-hmm. or the bus. <clears throat> there was a bunch of us there, and it was like kind of a like a, a moment of closure. I think like you weren't wrong. This was possible. Yeah, yeah. And like, yeah, it was a cool moment for everybody. Cool. Um, and then the helicopter flip was for the same show. It was the same show. I did. I think the helicopter one was first. It was first. That was a funny one because I that's like that was the first time I had done it. So I'm like on the phone with the producer and obviously I'm trying to like, I'm trying to get this thing. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, you bring a helicopter in, hover over the quarter pipe. I'm going to fly up. I'm going to stall the skids of the helicopter and go back in. And he's like, you're going to do that. I'm like, yeah. He's like, all right. <laughs> Just right then and there. Yeah. At this point, you know like, how to sell it. He was like, like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know how this works. It's going to be fucking awesome. dude. <laughs> yeah. And then of course you fast forward like a few months and you're on the roll and the helicopter's there and you're like, Oh uh, God! Why did I say this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one's got to be crazy because you wall tapped the helicopter. Did you ice pick it or wall tapped it? I wall tapped it to warm up, and then like just as test runs, and then the goal of it was to ice pick. Uh-huh. We had built Wessel built a little uh, sub box on the skid, so it was like a little sub box. That's got to be crazy though, just like the mental of the the blades above your head. It was a two and a half foot tolerance, so. I would have had to have. That's closer to uh, <laughs> yeah. two and a half or three and a half, something like that, foot tolerance. But I thought it was like eight feet. You but know, the, like that's the amount. Close. <laughs> it wasn't nothing. Like yeah. you could do it. Yeah. yeah. You could chop your head off. <laughs> <laughs> the, but, but the downforce from the blades was 60 feet per square. I don't know. They did all the math. That was the whole point of the show, was the, like combined the science. science with yeah. So the closer sports. you got, the harder it pushed you away. Yeah, and it was like it was basically they did some math. I was basically like trying to do it with a 180 pound bike, and I was like 320 pounds based on the downforce. So to blow it that far, like how many times have you missed an ice pick by three and a half feet? True, <laughs> going into 60 yeah. foot pounds of pressure. yeah. So I wasn't so worried. The math about does that. make it nice. Yeah. I wasn't so worried about, but that. still the mental of like, Ugh. but the crazy the crazy thing is, so do you do you really felt it push you down like that? Oh yeah. So you had to haul so ass had, to get. I up had there. a rolling. It was an eight foot quarter pipe and we built, we built like a, a knuckle on it. So it wasn't coping mm-hmm. and it was two feet under vert. So it was like a, like a mini ramp type transition. So you had more to come into. Yeah. Um, and we put some foam and resi on the knuckle. So it was, if I messed up and like landed right on it, it wouldn't be too bad. And then the helicopter blade comes down and chops you into little tiny pieces <laughs> like a salad. Yeah, like that. <laughs> you got the resi underneath the helicopter blade. Okay, this sounds safe. <laughs> I didn't want to get a hip, a hip around the Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so I was wearing my shin down. guards. Yeah. I had to pedal down the rolling as fast as I could to get to actually yeah. get up to the thing. So I'm going as fast as I can possibly go just to get to the thing. Yeah. But the way we the way we had worked it out is we had a forklift and we built the mock sub box the one that was going to be on the helicopter so i just worked my way up to it with no wind just chilling Mm -hmm. oh yeah let's make it higher let's make it higher let's make it higher so i felt good at eight feet it was an eight foot quarter pipe eight foot sub box so it was pretty big ice yeah um and i was able to dial in the speed and and how high it was and how far back i wanted it to be so how far back the test sub box was we painted a line on the deck of the quarter pipe and how high it was how high i wanted it to be we had a, s- a string hanging off the helicopter with a plumb bob and all the, I know, actually we just tied it to a rock. <laughs> we just tied the string to a rock. So all the guy had, to, all the pilot had to do was put the rock 
on the white line. And it was exactly where it was in my practice. Huh. But that win though, changed but everything. Changed everything. Like. But it was, it, we did it at Woodward West. It was behind Enterprise between, it was the same exact spot where Alistair did his stunt, like next to the indoor building. Uh -huh. Like, mm -hmm. so the helicopter kind of had to like, he was like in a zone, you yeah. know, he wouldn't, he wasn't clear of everything, Yeah. but it was super windy that day. All the money spent, helicopters there. And that's like the first, the first thing they're like, okay, when you introduce, when you introduce yourself to the pilot, cause it's reality TV, when you introduce yourself to the pilot, I want you to be really concerned about the wind. Ask him about the wind. Yeah. And I don't know what they told him. Yeah. Cause they maybe told him to do this, but it was one of my favorite moments as I was like, cause I was kind of concerned about it. I was like, what do you think about this wind? And he's like, it's less than ideal. <laughs> that was all he said. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This, this helicopter pilot is like a famous stunt pilot. Check out Fred North on Instagram. It's insane. The stuff he does. Different breed of human would also probably ride a do tour without any front. <laughs> <laughs> he told he told less than ideal but <laughs> yeah. he told me that it. they put an electric pencil sharpener on the back of a moving truck and he taped a pencil to his skid and he sharpened the pencil flying while the truck was driving down the road <laughs> so that was that was his that was his confidence yeah. boost for me that it's going to be okay i feel like that's a full of shit he just told it's like a joke that he's been saying for 10 years or something Why i imagine we, i imagine like, like they did it for some guinness book of world records and like it maybe. touched and maybe it happened I don't maybe know. I, I feel like it's like one of those things like yeah i've been telling people a, por just, a porky pie yeah, <laughs> yeah. people are like okay I'll, oh yeah i trust you now it you worked do that. there's, there's, it got, there's got confidence after yeah. that yeah. there's got to be a photo of this because the photo kind of at least shows how crazy it is. You don't need no, to see the whole, there's the, no photos or nothing. The, on your Instagram, yeah. Sorry, I started typing in Fred North. I was like, he does some crazy, crazy helicopter. Stuff. Dude, the helicopter, the helicopter ride he took my brother and I on afterwards, and Nate Wessel was way more scary than doing this stuff. <laughs> I believe it. That'd be fucking terrifying. It's funny because you don't really use social media that much. So it was a November sixteenth. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm yeah. I'm like. Oh wait, sorry, I'm on the wrong window. I'm not. I'm not uh, posting stuff all the time. That's for sure. Yeah. So, I mean that that looks insane. That looks crazy. And then the ice to ice pick that is really fucking crazy. Yeah, but dude, and the re the resi is, makes it all safe though. But here's I really the, like yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> the coping resi. <laughs> here's the, here's the thing. Guys. I like that. That and, was a thing. Like and it's so dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That was a concern of mine. Yeah, but it was good. It I guess because if you missed it completely, you would go straight yeah, to your hips. But so I it is that. a good. It is a good thing that it was there because mm -hmm. the first wall tap I did, I hit the helicopter and the helicopter moved, moved. out of the way, and yeah. I just dropped flat onto my thigh onto that resi. So oh, like it was wobbly. My concern and you was, didn't have yeah. like. Ooh, okay. So he, I get, he ended I get why you did. That, he ended though. up having. He ended up having to time it. Like so he would fart. like he would lean into me as I was coming into it. Mm. But so go back to the wind thing. This is <laughs> this is the most hilarious. This is that moment when I'm like. Why did I say this? <laughs> so we're setting up for our first practice for this actual photo. That's a right stunt. Here. Yeah. For this Go photo, ahead. we were setting up. And, you know, he's supposed to put the rock that's tied to the string on the white line. And then it's exactly where it was when I practiced. And I just do the same thing and whatever. <laughs> he, he says to me before we do the first practice, he's like, so my signal is just going to be a nod. Like, I'll look at you and nod when I'm in position. Because I can't, because, you know, flying helicopters, both feet, both hands. Yeah. He's like, I'll just give you a nod when you're good to go. I'm like, okay, sick. I get up on the rolling. The helicopter's doing this over the quarter pipe. <laughs> the pilot's looking at me like this. <clears throat> and I'm like, that's it? That's all you got? You're not sharpening a pencil with that? Yeah, like, yeah. That was it because it was super windy and he was like moving. There was like a two or three foot sway and he was doing his thing. And I'm Ooh. just like looking at all the people that spent the money and like... <laughs> The people that built the ramps and i'm like i really want to do this so here we go <laughs> <laughs> and it just kept swaying the whole time so you just had to go just like, had to get like, you had to look up last second and see if it's two feet off from it, where you want first it. time first time i hit the wall the helicopter moved crashed went back up did it again went to like sprocket went back the helicopter pilot went and landed we had a conversation he's like okay i'm just gonna need to i'm gonna need to lean into you so we figure that out. i'm like okay i'm gonna do two more wall taps and then we're going to do an ice pick, the, the goal, right? Yeah. Do the two wall taps, go up to do the ice pick. He, he swings in before I'm ready. So he like scoops me up and I fall into the helicopter a little bit. But I'm standing on this little like one foot wide platform on the edge of this helicopter. Yeah. And he went to swing. So now he's, he's coming into the ramp. I'm, yeah. lose, I'm losing transition to get back in. So I just jump 
basically to flat and explode. Oh my God. And then he goes back and lands again. And I realized during that time that I could not get up to eight feet with the amount of pressure. Like that is at the eight foot mark. And that was as high as I could possibly get with the down floors. You're crazy. So I did a little math like, okay, it's about a foot and a half. So he went down to seven feet, six and a half, seven feet. We shortened the string. Yeah. <laughs> and then he got down and I was able to do the ice pick. Crazy. So like you, when you say you weren't able to, you're literally pedaling about as fast as you felt. I was, was going as fast possible. as I could possibly go with the rolling I had. Crazy. Yeah. Mm. Crazy. Yeah. I was like hitting a wall. Yeah. Of of yeah you would just like brrr, slow down as you're trying to get up there yeah it's like you're on the top of the rolling at a do tour waiting for the wind except <laughs> it never goes away yeah and nobody <laughs> said it's live you have to go now <laughs> what other stunts have you done i'm like trying to remember have you done any other things had like a this? kid had a kid that's a good yeah. stunt. <laughs> stunt yeah i mean it was always kind of stunt oriented right like even all the way back to doing the <clears throat> the flip over the the baton rouge off ramp thing like that's oh kind yeah of, that's kind of a stunt. i have a i have a stunt i was i watched most of this today and i was like there's a clip in here this is my I, this is my high school is this well that music one yeah, I, I don't know what this oh dude that is still this is a <laughs> that's one of still one of the gnarliest things that i've ever done I was, I was speaking of stunt. You landed on the damn landing instead of made it to the water. He, to, that's what he wanted to. Yeah, yeah he put a ball the down. Nice. And then, the, and then this is pretty Can you sick too. That? I want to say, look, at, look, how, say, look how, how wrapped up my back is. That, that was, was the year I had the. Oh, it was. Yeah. Huh? yeah, let's go back to this. Yeah, dude, that was one of the scarier things I'd ever done. Is it? What is this? This is Expendable, Expendable Three. Oh, yeah. dude, the Jinx. Expendable videos were Ooh, sick. Illegal fist pump while still on the course. <laughs> At least it wasn't a riverside rollout where your feet slip and then you just throw the bike like they oh like it the was part of the part of the celebration where you no oh my god that was so crazy dude dude the, the was the that at the college and yeah DVC yeah it's still there yeah the deck the deck that I was riding along is around a curved front so you couldn't see the ramp until the very last yeah. second is that where you grew up right by that college yeah that uh, that high school where I jumped in the pool was across the street. It was an Iquos ramp, right? Yeah. I used the, to hang out the in Boston your hood a little bit. Let's see if the music got any better. No, it didn't at all. <laughs> Real representative of the time, though. <laughs> Ooh, didn't quite make it. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love the stunts, you know. We drove. We drove. Adding ramps and getting towed in and using helicopters. <laughs> I don't know what that was. This was it's a bit a of a stunt too. This popped up on Instagram. Oh yeah, recently. this is good. This was this was literally three blocks from my house in Greenville. I don't know why I keep turning on the music, Please, expecting yeah. something different. Please stop. I was so <laughs> bummed when it came out. <laughs> I had to crash Dude. this one on purpose. I had to lay it down because the first the Riverside rollout. Yeah. yeah. Planned. Oh Riverside my rollout. god! The first yeah. time in the, the first <laughs> the first that... warm up. They actually show it in the credits, but the first warm up. I just jumped it straight and I almost didn't stop. What, yeah, how big of a yeah. drop it's is in, that? It's in here. Can we, like can we just talk and watch this whole oh, thing? I think this, this is it maybe. Oh my this is, God. Yeah, this yeah, is this it. Is oh my I almost God. don't stop. Why would you build that roof? It's the original mega ramp. Right? I'm like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yo, coming in off a tail, I'm going to have to just lay it down. That was I mean, perfect though. It, yeah, so perfect. I mean, what is the what is the that thing? Let's like get out of here. Fuck okay. out of here. Yeah. So we making sure. So we planned to go do it early in the morning. It's a second clip and the banger. No, these are like the credits the for some oh, reason. Okay. I think yeah. it's maybe the end of the video. <laughs> there was water polo practice going on while that's happening. With that. <laughs> <laughs> that's on uh, we, YouTube. We, your expandable three part. Alan it is on there too, but the three. quality was better on this one. What is so. this? How, this is daily motion. Okay. Daily motion. I'll, I can put the link in here. But yeah, I went. Well, I was. I think I was sixteen for most of that. Most of this video. Yeah. 16, 17 for sure. You're already on Fox. It's crazy. Yeah, you. you but it was like down. The, it was really down young. the street from Specialized, and obviously all the people that worked at Specialized knew all the people that worked at Fox. Yeah, yeah. it was in NorCal back then. Yeah. It was in the same town. It's for, it's funny to see this stuff because it's like you, you know you're doing kinked rails, and obviously there's the stunt aspect of it and stuff like that. But it's it, you were more well rounded than I think people gave you credit for back then. Does yeah, does that make sense? This yeah, video sure. part is so inspiring. It's like everything. <laughs> that was a DK dirt circuit. Ramp. Look at the screets. Screet. 
Was that a rollback? Was it, it was some, uh, it was oh, just, dude, go back, go back to it the was turn, go back to the turn down. I want to touch on something you said earlier. No, oh, I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> that wasn't a there rollout. That so was that, was, that one was all right. That was that one was all right. But it yeah. was the look back one is what I got. Yeah, there was, the there was a big there was a big Fox ad that came out and it was an, a very unclicked look back. <laughs> you you and inspired we'll the name of this podcast. We'll that have to Alan ask. Unclicked podcast. Yeah, <laughs> that was fucking crazy. But you, Ryan, you Ryan don't need to do a turn name down. unclicked look back the cookback, and the it became back, like a yeah. funny thing. But I don't yeah. think I was ever like seriously mad about it. This no, it, and that was the thing is because obviously like sure and Gary and I that's DBC. All, all live yeah. together. That DBC too? Yeah, and, that and, school's got spots. You did this rail. You double tired this one. That gnarly steep one. Oh, that rail is sick. Yeah, you grew up right where Christian and Connor did pretty much. Yeah, like, they were like one generation behind me. Yeah, mm. maybe two, maybe two. <laughs> <laughs> mm. But uh, but yeah, so I mean, we were in a BMX house and it was like, you know, sure, sure. I'm a shit talker. Sure is a shit talker. <laughs> Gary, Gary's really nice. That's like, that but Gary, a Gary can cut deep when he wants to when he wants to, you know, yeah. talk shit to somebody. Ask, ask Gary Young about the van stunt. He's the only other one that wrote it with me because I went back to film. Really? I went I put. I put two picnic benches on the top and I did bar manual bar uh-huh. and he, we did it in the DC parking line. So he came out cause he wanted to ride it. He had some ideas. Yeah. But it's the scared. moving van. Yeah. It was in the DC parking lot. So it was in here. And for a while we had left it there. Yeah. After oh. the stunt, I, I had to go somewhere. That. I had to go somewhere. Yeah. I remember him riding it. Now. So before okay. they took it to the, to the, to the auto recycler or whatever, puppy we went chewing on a metal stunt. Okay. Thing. <laughs> we went and filmed that stunt. Hey, hey, that's no. crazy. And He's Gary came out, my office chair. Gary came out to ride it and it like, I mean, I'm not going to speak for him, but I think it scared the shit out of him. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was you're really right. scary. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, so either way, yeah, the cook, the cookback thing and stuff like that was like it became a thing. Come and on, I think boy. I think you called me out at some point, maybe. And and we had a conversation, and I got to know you, and I was like, oh, he just likes to like talk shit, just yeah. like the rest of us. And it was like after <laughs> I got to know you, I was, because there was. There was a quote and I think the and it's so funny that I I to this day I still remember it. And one of the quotes was there there was two well, actually there is two quotes. And I think they're both from Sure and it was it was you were like, "Oh, you're going to do you're going to win the contest this weekend?" And this is you at, talking to Sure and he was like, "No." And he's like, "Well, why'd you show up?" <laughs> Alan said that to him. Or? Yeah, <laughs> and then he was, you know. But if you get to know, you know, if you guys were on a different level, yeah, it'd yeah. be like a joke. And then there was another one where it was like, uh, you were getting a sandwich and you ordered like avocado and bacon, or it's not, and and you're like, oh, and then somebody was like, oh, that's that's a pretty expensive sandwich, and you're like, oh, it's just another truck driver to me. And then so he had these two <laughs> yeah. quotes that were like. <laughs> you know, like funny, and then we latched onto him, and then we had this whole thing, and we hit we we had a we had a thing where it was called we called it the All Star Team, and we had a bunch of people on it that we just deemed magically, and then we, I was on the All Star Team. If they were gonna do it, if they were gonna do a video, it was gonna be called Fists of Glory because it was uh, <laughs> the illegal fist pump while still on the course. Yeah. <laughs> but it was like one of those things that was just like became a joke in our house, and then I've, of course I end up working for Ride and meeting every you know, and it's like. Yeah, yeah. It's it's we had a conversation, I think, in Vegas. that so was pretty funny, but it was like, <laughs> I like him. But after that, like, so I had a lot of that. I yeah. had a lot of like <laughs> chewy toys <laughs> puppy. I had I think I ran into a lot of miss like people had a misunderstanding of who I was. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, remember, I think it's because that's what I noticed is like when I met you guys, you guys could all talk shit and we're just like real people. But I think a lot of people put you guys up on like a pedestal of like superheroes. So if you did say any sort of shit talking, people took it like, you yeah, know, you can't say that. Competitiveness you're, you're like a and BMX. jockness. And yeah, like that yeah. Was the rather than you guys yeah. were actually we were just more normal. Yeah. yeah, we were yeah. being dickheads. Yeah. You were more sure, normal than people thought. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's it's funny. It's it's still a perception these days, too, because even I when you showed up, I was talking to Vish and he's we're working on the triple challenge thing. And he's like, yeah, I kind of went in and just thought this is going to like be weird and all that stuff and he's like everybody's super nice and everybody just wants to have fun and they're super appreciative of everything and they're all really cool and it's like yeah it's like they're all bike riders at the end yeah you know and it's but it's funny when it's you have these like segments and you kind of forget it so but yeah it was a it was a funny little phase <laughs> but the cook did the cookback actually go further than like was it a thing i still don't even know if that's yeah. all like if, if that photo that fox had if that's all i could actually do that day or yeah. if like Losi sent them the wrong photo. I don't know. Yeah, because we did like. Oh, they ran an ad of an. Unclick. There was a big double page spread of a very unclick <laughs> look back. <laughs> yeah, and I'm yeah. like, oh man. 
I could be the new logo next year, maybe. Yeah, but it made me. <laughs> it got me going. It got me going. I, I, have, I still have the ad. So yeah, send it over. Maybe we'll just we'll we'll line art it. And but here's logo. here's what's funny is, did you know there was like a there was like a g- girl piece to that story that maybe you never knew? No, I did not know that. Let's hear it. So back at Gravity Games in ninety nine or two thousand or something, because sure was from Massachusetts. Yeah. he was like hanging out with this girl who is Kevin Robinson's cousin. Okay. I guess, I don't know. We won't use names. Yeah. We won't use names. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, and at that time, I'm like this Mountain Dew nerd kid. Yeah. And I come in and then I actually dated her for a couple of years. Uh. So there was this like weirdness at contests about that. Sometimes when I would see him, like, cause I, I don't know. Yeah. He dated his ex. This is all, this is all like in my head. I have never had a conversation about yeah, this, but that's yeah. where, when it came up, that's what I was like in my head. Like, is that why he's doing that? I yeah. 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 Nah, I mean, drama. Just, we're just all... <laughs> Not really. Nah. Yeah. That yeah. was the whole joke of that video drama we did. It's like, all, come on people. All out, all out sure. And like the, the BMX board days, his, his username was Laird's goatee. <laughs> <laughs> so Laird's. it was I like, think I remember go. that being a thing for a minute, like someone that bullshit yeah yeah it was like he would like talk about he was like trolling you know back in the internet days so or back in the anonymous days i guess that's but, funny yeah pretty funny um what about um so before we move into the the industry side when she moved into you made local exposure tours and drama was pretty much a video created by you yeah we did a couple we did f this s yeah and drama um and that was with brian purdy yeah your, your good friend yeah, there it is. You, right think that, you think that was a mistake? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm looking into your soul. So um, you did it all. Made your own videos too. To well, at the time, at the time, I just wanted to, I wanted to do that. I wanted to do video projects. And I, I wasn't getting asked to. I'd never, yeah. I never was invited on a props thing. I was never invited to to like Interesting. I had a good time doing crazy. doing that expendable. Like I really enjoyed going on trips and, and pushing myself on street. Here, look at look at my topic list. And the highlighted, not cool enough for road full, so you made local exposure tour. Mm. Made as I've page. heard you say that before. That's why I said. <laughs> I mean, it was pretty. It was pretty. That was my sentiment back in the day. I'm but surprised you never got that. invited on that. It seems like road Oops. fools, but I guess. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was more than road fools. It wasn't just the coolest stuff. It was about exposing locals. No, and, no, no. And, I'm and, saying yeah. I was surprised that he never got invited. Oh yeah, on yeah, road yeah, fools. yeah, yeah, yeah. But that somewhat essentially led to you making your own style. I mean, ultimately, like. <clears throat> It was a conversation with Anthony Napolitan. So in the wintertime, when it was like before there were warehouses in Greenville, in the wintertime, when it would get too cold and too shitty to ride JC Park, I would always go to the Midwest because there was Four Seasons. There was all there was three Changas at one point in time. There was, you know, there was there was a, a lot of really good indoor parks up there. Section eight was where I met Anthony Napolitan. And I'm like, at this time, you know, like people in the BMX world know me from X Games, winning X Games, doing these things. So when you show up, there's a bit of an expectation of like, oh, this dude's going to kill it. But I showed up to section eight and Napolitan was like shredding me to pieces. And I asked, and he was like 16 at the time. And I asked him, I was like, are, how are you not like, are you sponsored? Like, he's like, no, or no, he asked me, how do, how do you get sponsored? Like, and I'm like, oh, and I looked back at, you know, my days of if you made a final, you got sponsored. Like, oh, you got to do good at contests and, and get photos and magazines. Like, cause that, you know, that's what I did good advice and he's like oh that's okay that's cool and he like kind of seemed like like bummed about my answer Mm -hmm. and he's like oh well it's really hard to break out at contests and it's hard to get photos because every time the photographers are here they're here because you guys are here and they're shooting you guys yeah and then at the contests they're just like little amateur kids and no one's getting giving them photos and nobody really cares about amateur contest rankings so I was like, oh, there's a void there. Because I remember when, you know, pr- there was a few props where they would go do the demo, you know, at the skate park. But it was always just the riders that were invited on the trip riding. Yeah. And so through those two experiences, I kind of put two and two together. I was like, let's go do this Road Fools-like tour, but let's invite the locals to ride with us. And then at the end, we'll close down the park and highlight them, just them. Yeah. 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 And all of my sponsors at the time yeah. were like... <clears throat> stoked on it like yeah let's do this and the people that won the series would win a sponsor a uh, one-year sponsorship from all of my sponsors so like it would blow the people the people who won usually if they had there's a few people who didn't give a fuck and kind of yeah went their own direction so they had a sick year being pro but some people like i, I mean Pizanzin. 
Drew won one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like that's crazy. it blew some people up. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Was and so you would go to different um We would do parks. it regionally. Yeah. We would do it regionally. We'd do six skate parks and we would do Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then there'd be a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, like day off, or like maybe a, a drive that we got to do. And we would take, I would take all the pros to do fun things. Like we did skydiving and motocross in the same day one time. Mm-hmm. Um, we did rally school in New Hampshire. We went wakeboarding at Sean White's house and almost killed Walter Perringer on this like slide pivot. Thing. I remember that one. Yeah, it was so gnarly. Um, but yeah, we would always just the have one fun where he, things to do. Sickest they, they're, idea. They're yeah. pulling. They're pulling everybody on the thing, and then Walter gets on it, and he's only one hundred and ten pounds. pounds. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and so they pull him, that. and he goes twenty, thirty feet in the air and upside and, down. And Walter is uh, Walter is a savage too, but he gets off and he's frozen, and he's like. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, Dude, it was gnarly. Yeah, he's shocked. It was gnarly. <laughs> <laughs> Where's our footage? Where's like a summation? There's so many videos like in it was all seven. DVD. But I mean, like there's. Oh, is there stuff on the internet? Yeah, there's some Man, stuff. When you guys came to San Diego, it was so cool because. I mean, here's like. The it best. was like Esco Park, Claremont. There was like three days in a row. Yeah. And it was all of our best friends and it wasn't a competition. Everyone was just like, let's ride the Sessioning. local park as hard as we can with these pros we never got to ride with. It was yeah. so And at that time sick. it was a TV show on fuel. So it was like, it had come to fruition. This is yeah. giving these kids this platform. It was so it. cool. And it was a, like a three day long for us. But I think you guys were in Arizona for three days before. Yeah, we did three days in AZ mm-hmm. and then came here and did three days. Yeah, that was unreal. Like, I remember I that. Mean, Everyone I mean, was like, because that's how we would pick the winner is each each visiting each pro, which was like 10 pros, would vote on their yep. overall favorite. And everyone was like, Dennis is the guy, Dennis is the guy, Dennis oh, is the guy. Sick. And Gary was like, he's already sponsored. No. <laughs> <laughs> Too yeah, funny. that was a pretty interesting time because I remember you talked to me about it and I was like, yeah, kind of already like getting hooked up and stuff. And I was yeah. like, but I was still amateur. So it was, yeah, it was, you were well, we in between we'll watch yeah, a little bit, but this is, but it was so cool, cool though. You weren't tripping for me it, though. Yeah. I was like, I get to ride with you guys yeah. and my friends. It was like the sickest thing ever. Five. How many did you do? Five, five, okay. five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, the antics on the road. Oh yeah. Were too good. We had yeah. a tattoo artist on the bus the whole time as well. Free <laughs> tattoos for the pros. And didn't you guys like rent Harleys Curtis. one time and everyone could drive the Harleys behind dude, the Harley sponsor. Harley sponsored and you gave us Harleys. Yeah. Curtis, call, hey, Colin McKay told me that. And like no one had a license yeah, except dude. for a couple people. So they, they got to ride them like the whole time. Yeah. And just Harleys and bikes. Yeah. It was sick. Oh, you know what? You know what the only thing was? I was like, um, well, if you guys, I think you invited me like on the next one and you guys never did a next one or something. Yeah, I think that's what it was. But that's what I was pumped. I was like, I don't care about winning. If I can go on the next one with you guys, like I'll be the happiest person in the world. I'll hit you up this summer. Do you want to come out and ride some mountain bikes? Because I'm trying to do you that. You do a recreation. local exposure for mountain bikes? Sort of. I'm going to do a recreation. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, well, like, what's a what's a budget for this stuff? Back huh. then? <clears throat> I think credits. I think at its height, menace. It was maybe thirty grand. That's it. I did it on the cheap. Yeah, because you had your own bus. I had my own bus. Boost Mobile had a bus, and Fox had a bus. So we had three buses on the tour. Crazy. Okay. Yeah. RB and it was sponsored. Some sponsors. And it was yeah, sponsored by three Harley. buses. It was yeah. sponsored oh, by Harley. It was sponsored by Mountain Dew. It was sponsored by Bell Helmets. It was sponsored by Boost Mobile. Most of the so things, what are, what, are, what do you mean? So they pitch in the thirty grand. So or? most most of the sponsorship support came through free product to okay. just give to people. Yeah, yeah, and 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 the usage of the bus and stuff like yeah, that. I'm sure. Yeah, and there, because there's a driver attached. There's to a it. driver, yeah. Yeah. and then you guys just showed up at yeah. parks that were already there that wanted you guys to come. So it's pretty genius. Idea. Yeah, I would you didn't just have ca- to make anything. I would just call all the parks and like schedule it and like send them. It was old school, dude. I would like. I would send, I would mail them flyers that I made at Kinko's on the copy machine to go hang up in the park. Like, hey, we're coming next month. Yeah. And it had the list of the the people that were on the tour. That's cool. That was old school. It was analog. Yeah. I mean, honestly, not that, not that much. 30 grand. That was pretty crazy. No, it was pretty cheap. It was also a long time ago. Yeah. True. True. Yeah. I never made any money on it. Yeah. I definitely spent money to do it sometimes, but it was always worth it. It was like. You know, you hear Seminac talking about the money he invests in those video parts. That's yeah. like, that's kind of what I was doing then. I was like, I didn't see it as like, oh, it's this opportunity to like make a bunch of money and own this TV show and do this thing. It was like, fuck, I'm like just making finals now. I got to do something better. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I, and also like, 
Winning. It's back to that thing you said in the beginning, though. It's another cool thing you could do for yourself, your sponsors, BMX, and ride as much as possible. Yeah. yeah. Like, it yeah. always involved, like, you're still doing cannibals. <laughs> like, riding every park, you know, it's like, yeah, it, it, it wasn't going to be rider. something you were going to sit there and announce. It was like, yeah. no, we ride with the locals. Like, yeah, you yeah. made sure to incorporate riding every day. Yeah. I was feeding off of the froth from the youth to keep me going. Mm -hmm. no, those were some of way. my favorite sessions. I was like that, you know, 15, 16 year old, whatever age I was. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'll never forget those sessions because they were at three of my local parks. Two, or, Where were they? They were at Claremont. It doesn't matter. But it was like three <laughs> sessions that were like the best sessions. Yeah. Of, of, Claremont, Escondido and Paris. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And they were like the best sessions I've ever had at any of those parks because everyone was like killing it. We're riding today. Yeah, like nobody was chilling. Like we're going to ride. Yeah, Marcos Torres sick. won. Yeah, like such a legend. He, oh wow, yeah. someone who didn't want any shine. You know, he was like, "This is sick," but won everything he won it, and then he was just like, "Ooh, like yeah." He was such a fucking yeah, underground he was a beast, legend. Yeah. Shout out to Marcos. Yeah. He's not listening to this. No, yeah. <laughs> is he still a cop? He, he's Sorry. up in North. I'm not sure what he heard is. So I haven't, I haven't seen him in dude. ten years, fifteen years, like a long time. But shoots, fuck, he was sick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah such a chill dude. Mm -hmm. So like humble and gracious for yeah. everything. Yeah, that was mm -hmm. cool. Cool guy to win that. Yeah. Um. Okay. That, I mean, that's crazy. And then, so this is 2008 and then 2008 is, I mean, do we talk, is, was there much around before I move into 2008 and 2009 is, uh, is there much around like big air? Like, because I feel like you were early in that. Yeah. I did the first, the first ones. I mean, you can credit rooftop, I think a hundred percent for big air being or BMX being a part of big air because some of the stuff he was doing and the people he was connected with. Mm -hmm. And then they did, they did like a um a big air demonstration and they let him ride yeah and he like did a flat spin three and was like way ahead of his time just crazy justified now. it yeah. being viable yeah so then the next year there was an event and it was like if you're willing to drop in you can do this event <laughs> and so, there was which makes sense five of us i'm yeah. gonna have a, i'm gonna have a deal um was it a lot of deals was it uh finish the coffee finish the water i feel like X Games, because skating invented it or brought it, you know, Matt Hoffman invented it, but, but then Danny Way turned it into a, an event. Thing. Yeah. And then, so they didn't want BMX that, that set up, that setup that Danny Way's mega ramp was yep. at point X was an evolution from my welcome to DC ad, which it was, was a word. Yeah. I had that on the list too. Okay. So they didn't yeah. invent it at all. <laughs> they did invent it. They did. Invent <laughs> well, it they sure. invented it as a competitive they put, sport. Yeah. Yeah. They put together a bunch of ideas yeah. and made a new thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, then let's rewind to the fifty-four foot backflip. Uh, I got on DC and Ken Block, RIP, yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah. So much respect. Like I remember, it was weird. I was actually riding for Osiris at the time. Okay. And I was, I was not happy at Osiris. Like things were falling apart, and I think I was getting like two hundred fifty bucks a month, and it was just I had just won X Games, and I got this big offer from DC, and I'm like, of course I want to do that. So I go into DC and I go into Ken Block's office and it's like, so what do you want to do for your welcome to the team ad? That was what he said. That was the first words that I had conversation with Ken Block. Yeah. It's like, let's do the world record distance backflip. He's like, all right. What a cool team. Leader. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you're on, what do you want to do? What yeah. do let's do, do it. Do. Boom, yeah. boom, boom. It's like not a, just going to be a photo that already exists. Like, yeah. you, well, you're going to do something. And, uh, and that was like, well, obviously that's what I was into. Like I wanted to do things. They're like, we're not settling for an unclick look back, man. Yeah. This is going to yeah. be different here. Yeah. No DC. cookbacks here, buddy. <laughs> no cookback. We're doing this shit. <laughs> so did you have like, were you like going through the file cabinet in your head or did you have this kind of in your head already? I, I kind of had it in my head. It okay, was one of right. the things I wanted yeah. to do. Yeah. All right. That's cool. And then, so Point X was a short lived Woodward style camp. Yeah. It was and so sick. Out it was, it like was deep crazy. Temecula. I went. It was Mike deep. Craig took me and Christian Craig there. <laughs> so talking about Supercross, yeah. Races, yeah. yeah. But I was like, "What the fuck is this place?" I was like, 11. It's all that mega ramp." I was like, yeah. "What is going on out here?" That place was. It's insane. the only place I've seen the colored skate light. They have like green skate green, light. Yeah, yeah. It's it was so early cool. for that. They it's around now a is little it? bit, but it was like the only thing comparable to Woodward. <laughs> and I, I think the owner it would have done good, but the owners something weird dr drama happened. I think it was just a little too far out there, man. It was fucking deep. Woodward PA is in the middle of nowhere, though, and it works great. But it's it's forty it's minutes hot, from though. a big town. It, like Woodward idea, East is yeah. like humid. It doesn't get that hot. That's that, true. That deep Temecula like gets like one hundred and ten. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's yeah. what the summertime. Because I didn't go in the summer, and it was nice. But I'm sure the summer was like 
we can't send our kids out here. Yeah. There's, <laughs> there's like yeah. rattlesnakes and like heat wave. Yeah. It was, it was hot. I had, I had gone back out there after they had closed the camp to Curtis. do some Mountain Dew fo- like photo shoot stuff. And it was like the sun was eating everything. Yeah. It was getting yeah. taken back. It was interesting out there after it was gone because we went out there and just like kind of like pillaged through the ramps and like road shit. Is it like making it more fun that it wasn't supposed to be ridden at that yeah. point? Yeah. Because everything was falling apart. So pretty crazy little era. Um, so did you, you built the ramp, like you designed the ramp and built it or like, I, I know you didn't. So build Danny, it, build it. so before the, the Danny way ramp, that's in the, the, like the, the Danny way ramp people thinks of the one where he does the seven twenty on the 70 foot gap mm-hmm. and like the, tw- I don't know, 20 foot five forty or whatever, like the famous Danny way ramp. That was his second generation of that ramp. Okay. There was one that he had done at point X before that one that it was not as big and it was further down that hill remember how the rolling was like carved into the side of the mountain mm-hmm. it was further down so it was not as big and not as fast and i think that was where he realized he needed more speed and that was right around the same time that i was doing my stunt so they repurposed that earlier version of the mega ramp that danny had done for my stunt but like just kind of roughed it in and put it there but it gave them the understanding like okay this will work so that landing of the original Danny Way ramp and the quarter pipe and the roll-in was the same one that I used for my thing. And that was almost like they were rebuilding Danny Way's mega ramp while I needed to do this stunt. And I like in the midst of it being rebuilt, I like went and kind of proved like, okay, this works on the bike. And they just kept going and it turned mm. into what it did. Mm. Cause there was no 70 foot gap when I did it. Obviously it was just a flat deck. We had a freestyle moto ramp. We just started sliding it back. Yeah. Yeah. And it, dude it's so crazy the world record it. backflip that's how you did it at the time it was yeah. i want to yeah. see that, that it, might, it might be pre internet my brother was there. he sprayed a bottle of uh right here, so that was done at point fancy x champagne crystal in my face <laughs> there, there you go yeah. this is what we wow. get here where is it oh uh, i have to zoom in so much oh so you just use the landing and slid your ramp back yeah, yeah. dude it looks like you're roasting that like now that ramp was different than the like it's a, yeah, it's, a motor, it's, a, yeah. it's a lot steeper so you yeah. got to, you got more airtime yeah it was, it was more fun actually i think is this all we get of this this is what we this got this it, pixelated dude. photo all I right think so 2003 <sighs> then how long did that record last i don't know <laughs> how, how far was, was it? it an actual guinness one it was yeah oh there was, okay there was something oh no wait how long was it yeah yeah that was it. that was an actual one there was a, a guy there a guinness oh, okay one. but then i did a, a world record one later that was like it had a technicality like a world record toe in backflip Hmm. that i did for like a, a tribute to evil knievel jackass tribute to evil knievel okay i did it with matt like matt invited me out damn you really did do i got stunts. i got towed mm-hmm. in on evil knievel's old harley really yeah it was sick that's awesome johnny knoxville was there and like all the like all all the dudes that used to do all that stuff yeah. like it was pretty cool to hang out with them it was that's- scary though dude you would just back yourself in a corner and keep your head on a swivel anything could happen oh yeah with those dudes yeah is it uh, crazy like in the mountain bike industry now if there's like some young kid who has no clue about your history like it's just you know just you know it's they'll funny. start telling you some stories and you probably wish you could tell them the story but they're going to be like this guy's fucking lying <laughs> you know this gotta funny. happen yeah i don't know there's there's a couple people i think there's it, it happens yeah like when when we're talking about riding and someone's like if i'm out riding with somebody i haven't ridden before and they're like warning me about the trail ahead like yo just so you know there's this jump <laughs> it's pretty it's big like, man it's, it's like, like six feet 16 feet it's gonna yeah. be I'll, yeah, yeah i'll just do what you do like don't mess up yeah <laughs> and they're probably like hmm, this guy's gonna kill himself like, this is the marketing guy at special huh. like yeah 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 um, but people know because i've done some mountain bike events like i won whip off world champs two years in a row which i guess i'm the only one that's ever done it back to so back. people probably that didn't know started looking into you like who the hell is this guy and then they're like oh Dude, okay i think there's more mountain bike people that follow me than bmx people because social media came so much later yeah, yeah. your mountain bike industry life and being a mountain biker was more in when the shit started coming when did be when did you move to haro as like pro rider because you, you went from pro rider and still like in contests and stuff and then it seemed like all of a sudden you were like brand manager at haro but yeah. you, you were still kind well, of a pro 2008 biker. phase is 2008 yeah. you got dropped by specialized and fox i quit fox he quit fox i quit fox because of robbie (laughs) do tell (laughs) you don't have to no it's all it's all good we it's all cool now we've like we've talked about it before but and that was one of those things like i I realized in my career like people had a lot of preconceived notions about me yeah and robbie said that to me at one point we were on a fox trip 
And he was like, I had a lot of preconceived notions about you, you know, like I thought you were a certain thing and I'm here hanging out with you and you're not that. And yeah. That I gained a lot of respect for him and that that and as far as that goes. But it was also like just a bunch of weird things like I would show up to X Games where it's like the most important time of the year to represent your company and every single piece of clothing I got was not my size. Yeah. Just yeah. like weird things like that. And I felt well way more welcomed over at DC. So after 10 years of riding for Fox, oh. I stopped to then sign a clothing deal with Full DC. Deal. Yeah. yeah. Um, you mind just shutting the door? My, my wife got on a call too. Sorry. Uh, puppy will probably want to leave here in like five seconds now that you close the door, but. It's going to be okay. <laughs> um, okay. So off of Fox, left Fox, and then what happened with Specialized? So 2008 is the financial mm, housing real estate, crisis, yeah. real estate, everything explodes, right? So. <clears throat> I so specialized the year all the years leading up to this specialized had always sold out of BMX bikes. It was always like, oh, we, we it was like a something that they could add to the retailers, like to bring them on as a dealer. It was a more complete offering. Mm -hmm. and they were selling lots and lots of BMX bikes, but they would always sell out. So there was a there was a that year in 2007, they're like, let's double down. Mm -hmm. Let's 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 order more. Let's get these into BMX only shops as well as our bigger retailers. And the demand just wasn't there. Worst the housing, time they could have done it. Worst time possible. Worst time <laughs> possible. Because I was being groomed to to be a product manager and work there and do those things. This whole time I was riding for them for 10 years. Really? 10 years. Yeah. I was kind of being groomed like, yeah, just so you know, when your career's over, you can come here and work. Like, we want you to be here. That's cool. Yeah. It was bad. I never knew that. Yeah. But, you know, then the two, so 2008 housing crisis doesn't make sense. I feel bad for this guy. This new marketing guy had to call me. The first phone call we ever had was he dropped me from my 11 year sponsorship. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, and then I think maybe there was a couple at that same time. I think maybe Boost Mobile dropped at the same time. So now here I am. In 2008, I'm going to have a kid in three months. Mm. And I just lost two of my biggest paying sponsors. And now what am I going to do? Yeah. Right figure out what's next. So first thing I did was like what I've always done. I just started riding like more mm -hmm. and I got serious about my health. I started eating good. I got serious about my fitness. I started going to the gym. I really was inspired by Rob Darden, that turn that he made. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't very long after that. Yeah, it had I to be around the same time. All those same things started happening. And I was like, this is free. I can mm -hmm. just do this. And I started doing it and I got in the best shape of my life. And I was actually you know, going into that 2009 season, I was riding better than I had ever ridden, guaranteed. I took the brakes off my bike. I made things fun. I changed up my setup. I dropped my seat. I started doing different tricks. It became fresh. I felt good as a person, like, because I, I was not partying. I was not eating shitty food. I was healthier. I remember, I remember this, this moment when it clicked, riding the, uh, the first time I started riding. Because when I got, when I started to get in shape was after, like, a couple of surgeries or something. So I had like this window of time where I was only focusing on the gym mm -hmm. before I could ride. And then when I went back to riding, I was like 25 pounds lighter and strong. Mm. And I remember the first day at Nyquist's place, I over jumped the box jump backwards and like nosed into flat. But I just like took it. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah. So then I got super confident. Like that's how Dave's been fucking. <laughs> The yeah. best for so long. He works out too. He can do whatever he wants. Not why he's the best, but yeah, yeah, he was like doing that shit before anyone. It's yeah. definitely a piece yeah. of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. It's like Larry Edgar, man. He'll fall so hard and like it would knock anyone else out and his head doesn't even touch the ground. Yeah. He's yeah. so strong in every aspect. Yeah. So I got motivated, right? Like I, I'm that's so cool. A, starting a family. How old are you at this point? 26, 27. It's crazy. Still pretty young, relatively today's young. Today's BMX. Yeah. Yeah. But age. remember, I was 16 when I started. Yeah. 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 So it's yeah. already been a hell of a career. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I went into that season thinking like, all right, I'm riding for my future. Yeah. Like I'm going to learn all these things and it was coming to me and it was working. Um I got super consistent on a lot of the really hard tricks that I would only do at contests. I learned 720s, I learned a lot of different things and doing it all different breakless. Um it was working out. I was riding Verdes. That photo you, you that was on the cover. Mm -hmm. Um went to the a couple of contests and and did super good you know and at that time i was paying my own way to a contest for the first time mm. it was all different it was completely different but then i got that job like right before the season was really going to kick in i got the job offer from haro to be the brand manager and at that time 
I sat that sat back and like looked at like okay yes I'm starting a family what's the what's the like the logical thing to do but what do I believe I can do and I knew I knew I could do the riding thing because I was feeling that good but what it came down to is I I saw it as an opportunity to not hate the thing I love so much mm. it was a, it was a free pass to say I've had I've I've had enough like thank you for everything that I got to do I don't have to get into that situation where I'm spending my own money to get to contests and not making finals and feeling like a failure in it, like killing this thing that I love so much for so long. So that year when I got that job, I took it. I had to take it. It was like too good of an opportunity. Like this is the next step of my life. I remember thinking that was crazy because 2009, we're riding together in contests. Yeah. Then all of a sudden you're my boss at Haro. And still like, riding in the contest. Yeah. I was like, how is this guy going to do yeah. all this? You know? So 2009, I... I couldn't not ride that season because I was feeling so good. Yeah. And I got the job at Haro. I moved to I moved to San Marcos area, but I was from Greenville? Yeah. Okay. But wasn't riding that much. And I would come down to I would come down and try to ride with you guys. And obviously I'm not a local. I'm not like I'm not riding every day. So I'm not what I feel like I should be. And I had a lot of I had a struggle with that. Going to skate parks and, pe and feeling like people were expecting something from me mm -hmm. and I knew I didn't have it and it was starting to take the fun out of it a little bit and that was when I realized like okay this is this is 2009 this is my last season I'd, I'd never done a do tour without making a final and I hadn't made finals yet that year going into the last do tour of the season so I I talked to the people at Haro I said hey I'm, I'm checking out I'm not gonna I'm not gonna work the week before uh the last due tour of the season. So I went to Greenville early and I got back to basics and I just rode with my friends for mm -hmm. a week straight. And I got, I felt so good. I felt so dialed. And it's probably the thing, I don't know if I'm most proud, but the thing that feels like the biggest success of my career is that on that final competitive contest where I was actually trying to be competitive, I was able to make finals and like say goodbye in a way. Yeah, and having yeah. people share that moment with me rather than like you went out knowing you still had it rather than that like uncertainty probably of like yeah damn was i like going downward but you know like you took the job while you could have kept making finals if you were focusing yeah. on riding all the it, time it vindicated a lot of feelings that i had inside and it that's made, cool it made it feel really good to just be like okay yeah let it go and then the next year 2010 i did the nike us open and i did x games mega ramp because i was pre-qualified for those so I did those two contests and that was it. No more contests. No. Yeah. Crazy. How, how many people get to go out still making finals at the biggest contest in the world? Yeah. While Dude. like getting hired to be a brand manager, right? You went straight to brand manager. Yeah, it was my first job. Brand manager <laughs> of like a big ass company. <laughs> I learned a lot real fast there. <laughs> um, going in on the due tour stuff a little bit more. What, what other, did you have any other sponsors at that point or were you, when I was doing the, when you, when you said, Hey, I'm done. Okay. Uh, DC, DC, I was still contracted for another year after that. On okay. DC. So what happens with them? Uh, like, do they honor it? Do you, do you, do you cut it? Uh, how does that stuff work? No, they fully honored it. Okay. Yeah. I, I had a conversation with them and you know, this, I explained like, yeah, I'm, this is the end of my competitive career. Yeah. Like I'm still riding bikes. I'm going to do the contests that I'm invited to the big ones next year, which. Oh yeah. Time, because you had big air and stuff like that. At the time that. X games and Nike 6.0, that's on their target. Yeah. So I'm not doing nothing. And then, you know, after you retire, if you show up to an event, you're a novelty. So you get a little more coverage. They don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> that was and the then, year when they did, that was when Mike Allen was doing the sick tours. So I went okay. on a couple of the tours. All right. Yeah. It was fun. So you're still in it. Yeah. yeah. Just the competitive side. And then big air we we kind of um got detoured on that was there was there anything there with that you said you got a bronze um and then just like kind of those early days of like hey here's a 20 foot quarter pipe was it was it weird or how did how did that stuff work well the first year it was, yeah it was like if you're willing to do it you're in yeah that was the qualification and it was outside and it was the wind the window that they gave us to do it was windy yeah. and it was sketchy and there was only four people that were willing to ride who were the other it was myself it was morgan wade it was kevin robinson and chad kagey oh. and that was it kevin won that was the first one kevin won chad got second and i got third and morgan got fourth because he crashed every single run <laughs> did i get did i get third i don't know but i pulled i pulled my run yeah so, you just jumped straight yeah i might have done like a 
four foot air on that quarter pipe. It's like that was a twenty seven foot quarter pipe. It was the first time we had rode it. So. Yeah. And it was what, scary windy. Do was it full X Games prize money? Four um, people? No. Yeah. I think it was it was cut down. Yeah. I think it was still like four grand or something. It was good money. For third place? Yeah. yeah for go not falling. Go, go get an adrenaline rush. Yeah. Yeah, dude. It was gnarly. <laughs> yeah, that quarter um, is no joke. And then it got more and more as the years went on. Like I know Gary Gary wrote it one year. Yeah, they started putting it indoors, but they all they left it open and there was like a pre qualifier at one point even. Yeah, I feel like the next year everyone come, was there. It was like Mira, Hoffman entered, like the podium Gary. the podium yeah. was pre invited. And then they would open it up to people that wanted to ride and then they would they would bring in, I, I forget, they maybe they have eight riders or something like that. Mm -hmm. So there were some spots you could qualify into. You basically just had to prove you're not going to kill yourself on live mm -hmm. TV. And they'll let you in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were trying to figure it out. Like, <laughs> So how many years did you ride it? So your bronze is from the first year. Bronze is from the first okay, year. I got yeah. a couple of fourths after that, but yeah. I could never break in. Yeah. I was never... They would always score so much more on the quarter pipe, rightfully so. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it was way gnarlier, but my... I would always go way harder on the jump. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Makes that sense. was just, yeah, the way it worked. Yeah. Especially I feel like breed. that's how Anthony was too. Like, you guys, like, do we yeah. destroy the jump? But the quarter, you both were like, er, fuck that. <laughs> yeah. 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 You you guys would send it though when it came time. Like, even like a 13 foot no hander, 15 foot no hander is insane. But when you got K Rob doing like a 24 foot flare no hander, it's like, oh, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I think that was my best quarter pipe thing was like a 12 foot I remember that. no hander to bar or something. Yeah, yeah. You tuck barred it. And it was insane. But still, I remember watching that contest. I was like, dude, you got it. Like, that tuck to bar was crazy. But, that was probably still like one of the lower like yeah. 13 foot was still low but yeah. i'm looking at like 13 foot is like yeah, 40 feet in the air the highest air you'd ever do on like a 10 foot quarter you know <laughs> it's so great like 13 foot's as high as jamie goes on a vert ramp but yeah. it looks tiny on yeah. the mega ramp it feels yeah. like 13 feet when you're doing it hell yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i've only went a little bit out of the coping and you're like oh my god like this is way too crazy <laughs> um all right, so big. So one more big air, and then so your full time Haro. And you said you were overqualified or underqualified for Haro. <laughs> I was just trying to figure out life, dude. <laughs> I'd never had a job before besides yeah. a paper route. My free money career had just ended. Yeah, free money. I had a child. Yeah, and like, yeah, I was just figuring life. Moved out. across the country. Moved across the country. Yeah. yeah, figuring it out, like the work life and schedules and. Not was it was it difficult? Was there ego involved at all or no? Oh, now I sit here. This is fun, right? I was I, I think I was ready for the change. Maybe yeah. I definitely embraced it. I wasn't like, can't believe it's over. Yeah, I'm working now. You know, like <laughs> I think I think I embraced the challenge and it, I, I learned a lot. I did I definitely didn't hold back because like I, for, it's definitely subjective for better or worse. Two years after I got there, every single bike had a different name. Yeah. And there was a completely different line strategy and I had changed everything. You changed everything. I thought you did good. I thought you, you did, did a great stuff at Haro. You did and great like, stuff at Haro. I feel you, like you changed a chapter. You flipped a page and it turned yeah. into like a whole new thing. And I think a lot of the changes that you enacted came out after you were gone too. Oh, I, yeah. felt, I felt like, I don't know. Is that, is that accurate or no? Um, yeah, I think some of it. I think yeah. some of the team decisions that were made, I think Pat Casey came on right after I left. That was something we were working on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. There was some of that stuff. It, it's just, it's such a, it was such a hard place to work mm -hmm. because ultimately the people that were making the end decisions, I didn't get to see them every day. And yeah. for me being new in the work world, I didn't, I didn't get that. I didn't understand that. It didn't work. It didn't work for me. It didn't motivate me. So mm -hmm. that was ultimately why I left. Yeah. And then was that time period? How, how long is that time period? That was like just under three years. Oh, three years. It was yeah. longer than I remember. What? But hold on, time out. Yeah. Gotta hit one sick moment. This yeah. So not long before I left was my third, like moved, because I had to move to Santa Cruz for this next chapter, the bell job. Yeah. But not long, like maybe a week or two before I left uh, was my 30th birthday party. Mm. And my wife had like called a few bunch of people and got them all to this bar in San Marcos, this Penny Lane bar that I'd never been to before. I've been there actually. We went bowling with, Derek Betcher and Nick Long when we went bowling and had like a few pitchers of beer. I thought that was my birthday party. And we get on the parking lot. Oh, let's go in this other place. And I walk in and it's Kenny at the bar <laughs> ordering a drink with a fake mustache. My dad. On. Yeah. I have no idea, but everybody else, like, like he's there. Nyquist is there, or not, not Nyquist, but Nasty was there. Yeah. 
bunch I, of people. I can't remember, but the bar was filled with yeah, all of your friends. It was a yeah. bunch of people there, but I was completely just, and it was all decorated and everything. And everyone was wearing like 80s costumes, but I was completely missed all of that and walked straight up to Kenny and like, yo, what are you doing here? <laughs> Not realizing he just blew the, the surprise. <laughs> so he's all froze out with this fake mustache. And I'm like, just thinking I bumped into Kenny randomly. Yeah, yeah. And I turn around, everyone was there. But that was sick. That <laughs> was sick. That was a fun time. That Was was that right one. before you moved? It was pretty pretty close, I think. But that was one of the moments where I felt like my that that solidified it. Like my time at Haro definitely felt worth it because I like connected with you guys on a different yeah, level. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. And then I You're remember like, you, had, it. The, I you had like a little media day where you brought us all out and then we, we like did like the sprint stupid, around the stupid building. Olympics. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and remember the chain came off on Todd? Yeah. He ate shit. Yeah. Right? yeah. That was a bummer. Yeah. That, was that wasn't funny. a very good Todd test. Who? Yeah. Todd Toth, the sales guy for, for Vital. Oh, God. It was like a race around the building. And you had like a fun one where it was like. <laughs> the chain broke on the yeah. guy. Was it like on a complete bike? Well, there, or did... It was a complete bike, but the rear wheel slipped and the chain came off. And he just like <laughs> smashed his knee on the yeah. step and went over the bars. Yeah. <laughs> he had like one where it was like a it was like a gate start manual or something like that where it was like yeah you, you had to have like the front one... end off before the bottom of the gate and who could manual along yeah 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 it was pretty That's funny cool. like but like little funny things like it was pretty Be like which like, one of you media guys you know, actually back, rides? back then it was like a it, you know like the brands would have like come check out our bikes and that stuff but yeah Alan made it fun we went to a lunch i don't remember many i actually i went to a specialized one at woodward and ate shit really hard on a specialized complete bike. And it's at the clip is at the credits a drop of the hammer. Nice. Yeah. Was it the bike's fault? Dude, it the bike felt crazy. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it's the bike's fault, but the bike felt crazy. Dude, all those bikes felt crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're talking about that before we keep moving on the timeline. Specialized was like super into BMX and now they sponsor Nigel. He has a huge. It's like it's like, like through like it's through, a, it's like normal bikes because he has the he has the Nigel Nigel Foundation. So I think it's like they're donating a lot of bikes for that. But they he is on a bike, a specialized bike sometimes. Yeah, I think Bulldog made him a few frames. Huh? Yeah, Bulldog makes for this is blowing my mind. Bulldog <laughs> I think specialized frames. was BMX. Was it mountain bike back then, or was it did specialized yeah. turn from BMX into all bikes? It, okay, so I, it started specialized. Started I have so many dumb questions. In 1974, all right, by making road bike parts. And it evolved into making complete bikes. And then basically they had the first marketed mountain bike in 81. Okay. The stump jumper that came out. And then they just have always been everything since then. You know, Dude, you're right. He is riding for specialized. Everything. Yeah, he rides for specialized. Yeah. Okay. He's, 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 an, he's an influencer. He is what he is. He's not on the team because he is a BMX rider. He's on the team because he's, he's a social media influencer. Okay. That's, that's the program Who happens he's on. To be like, a good bike, really good bike rider. Yeah. Like his contracts are through the social media managers, not through the athletes. Through so the it's not stuff. like something that we plan on looking for a marketable return on. Yeah. Where's you know, your like, video part? We're going to, yeah, no video yeah. part. We're yeah. not going to make BMX bikes. It's not something like that. Okay. Well, that he's runs one of my questions. He's got a sticker on his bike. It's, it's working. He's got, he's got a huge following. He's, yeah. he's, you know, representing a, a group of people that are very underrepresented in the yeah. bike world and the bike industry. And yeah. I think that's cool to try to get get that group of people influenced by some one of their own to come out and ride bikes you know like it's making circles like riding bikes is good for everybody so I'm, it is it is totally undeniable it. is uh if, dumb question number one of many to come i'm sure uh is specialized the biggest bike company in the world or is that track this podcast is brought to you by camp woodward yeah. all the woodwards woodward west woodward pa woodward tahoe and woodward colorado I've been to the two, Woodward West and Woodward PA, and they are amazing. Yeah, I went to Woodward West with, with this young gentleman right here. Over the weekend. Over the weekend. We had a great time, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> There's a dozen in a place that looks nice. Uh-huh. There you can ride bikes. Yep. Have fun. Mm-hmm. Truly did. It was actually two days of uh, just just messing around and, and riding bikes and jumping on trampolines and doing little parkour stuff and checking out some snow it was honestly a cool weekend the snow was cold <laughs> snow it is cold. cold and uh <laughs> and right you now should, I, you should say jinx because you say that at the same time that's jinx. true <laughs> <laughs> too funny dude um, but, uh, you can go on the website yeah but there's see so the visiting there's, pros see mm -hmm. all the you can do camps throughout the summer as a a kid mm -hmm. but you also there's adult stuff in the off season there's yeah. tons of different stuff yeah. tons of visiting pros just 
endless stuff to do at all the camps. They're releasing the visiting pros uh, as as the summer goes on or gets closer. They have Nyquist in August that they're releasing, and a couple of they got a street dude. They got a they got a ramp legend in there, and then uh, somebody has to look my tricks. That and we do love your tricks, dude. So thank <laughs> yeah. you, thank you. And then uh, Woodward West has a pretty crazy deal right now. You can see it up here on the screen. Uh, not fifteen hundred dollars, not thirteen hundred dollars, but a thousand dollars. So. For a um, whole week, that's for a whole food, week. lodging, every type of ramp, foam pits, everything. It's mm -hmm. a $1,000 a lot. $1,000 is a lot, but for summer camp, it's, it's really not too bad. 50% less than $1,500, so. so that's a lot of money. Yeah. So, um, super good deal. $1,000? $1,000 is a lot when you're a six-year-old, almost six-year-old like you. <laughs> but for a parent that wants their kid to go somewhere awesome, it's a good deal. Yeah. And they have, they, every camp literally, and something that I didn't really, really realize is that every camp has just ride nights. So you can go ride for 30 or 40 bucks, go session, jump in the foam, whatever well, you want. Well, when we just hours. got here, so when we got there... They just let us in when it's not supposed to be open yet. Mm -hmm. Because they do weekend things now. You can do weekend camps. There's not just the full week summer camp anymore. If you're an adult, you can go with your mm -hmm. friends. There's like a bunch of different options mm -hmm. now. So There's an event in PA this and later this year too. So a bunch of stuff going on at Woodward. And thank you to them for so much for, for sponsoring the podcast. We, uh, we appreciate it. Yep, I've gone there. I don't I'm even so know how many times. And I can't wait to go back. The hotel? The hotel's cool, too. Woodward West had its own hotel. Woodward East does. Mm -hmm. Tahoe and Copper look amazing. I want to get out there. Let's all go. Let's go next weekend and the weekend after and the weekend after and the weekend after. Or do you got plans? Let's I don't do know if we have plans. <laughs> then we got plans now. <laughs> Thank you, bud. You're actually a pretty good podcast host. You brought oh, up the hotel you. on his own? Yeah. I know. I for we forgot about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, dude. Thank you. You're Sorry. Welcome. Back to it. Thanks, Woodward what's what's the statistic right you tell me sales who who brings in the most sales a year or does it go back and forth sales and far as as far as dollars or sales just answer the question alan it, i want to know the question <laughs> you're asking which company's worth the most money i wouldn't know that no? answer i know i know that there are like retailer i'm also like balancing what i can and can't say so okay no offense no, no um, i figured there'd be probably so some of that there's like so bicycle retailer has these reports where like bicycle sales get turned in uh -huh. and one of the things that we've really focused on over the years is being the number one full suspension mountain bike brand okay um over a certain price point like over the four thousand dollar line so now those are real bike riders yeah. that we're we're capturing yeah. and we've kind of since i've been there which is almost five years now working again um we were always kind of number two number three number two number three and now we're in that number one number one spot that the tw the 2023 numbers have come in so yeah we're if we're not if we're not the biggest in the category that you're asking we're definitely on the podium but probably the biggest of some of the you made categories finals. you could ask made finals we're on the box yeah <laughs> we're on the box but Getting the, the sickest thing about about it is we're the we're the last like rider owned big brand that there is so it's not a it's not a i mean it's a corporation but it's not a, there's no board member there are board members uh -huh. but ultimately mike sinyard is the is the final word okay that's the cool. guy who started the whole thing the that's guy cool. who wrote me a check yeah for wow. a season yeah that's wow. 15 years ago that's still 20 years the, ago. the owner uh, top was, dog i said 15 years ago dude that was 24 <laughs> years ago yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's when you like say we are saying like 2004 and stuff and you do the math yeah like, 20, years, that was 20, 20 years. years yeah but um, it's sick because like i see him out on the trail all the time riding like yeah what's up mike like it's just but it's a massive company it. like how the building the building you work in the specialized headquarters has how many people in it pre-covid i'd say probably like 350 350 that's a lot of fucking but people. Now, that's enough for like security guards multiple security guards but now i think it's like it's like maybe a hundred yeah a lot more people are working from a little remotely. more spread out. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Same building. Same building. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Same building I used to go to to like give feedback on products when I was 16 years old. Oh, wow. I trip that, out, it was that big that I long? I trip ago? out pulling in to the building. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Crazy. You're probably one of the people who's technically started working there like before anyone else. You know what I mean? There's, a, there's people that are, there's plenty, there's, there's a handful of people that were there long before I was that are still there okay. that I know them and remember them from that time and vice versa. And it's, it's funny. Like that's probably, that's got some, like, that's some roots, kid, man. Yeah. Presenting like a, this on this global that's blood presentation. Yeah. Um, I bleed red. Everybody yeah. does. <laughs> there you go. That's, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Do yeah. they make BMX bikes at all? 
No, not currently. None? No. How come they don't? It seems like they could step in and just make some really high-end dope product. I mean, we're, you know, we're a technology company. I think if we're going to make it, it's going to be sick. Yeah. I just think that, you know, the 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 numbers that are there as far as what you could sell for the amount of time that it would take from the engineers that are already overbooked trying to develop the things that they're already developing. You know, they're not going to do it half ass. It's not yeah. going to be like Let's just go to a factory that we trust, have them crank out these frames. They're going to want to go all in. Yeah. And there just hasn't been a reason for it. Yeah. Um, we kind of skipped over Bell. Is that worth discussing? Bell and Santa Cruz. There was two jobs. Before. You worked for Santa Cruz? Though? Yeah. Oh. Santa Cruz Bicycles. Okay. Yeah, I worked there for five years. Yeah. That was when I, <laughs> like, so when I was at Bell for three just years. A small yeah. little thing. Yeah. I was Longer like and still doing BMX <laughs> stuff, you yeah. know, like sponsoring BMX Band. athletes. And so, because that was when the team was like, definitive right connor yeah. van zach early yeah yeah uh, probably missing yeah. 10 people yeah 10 people uh greg alienworth right yeah yeah um i mean is that i mean and you have your brother aaron mm -hmm. who was created a, um, athlete recovery fund you're working for bell i mean I'm, I'm sure athlete recovery fund came first right uh when did that athlete recovery fund? yeah athlete yeah. recovery fund started when steven got hurt. when steven got hurt yeah when he hit the ground it started basically yeah which is i mean and then he sold that and it's like you guys have so much going on and i'm like i'm like is it worth discussing bell is it worth discussing santa cruz i mean or are they kind of like graze over it um it was it was definitely it we, we can glaze over it but i think more it really helped at this period of time in my transition from being a professional athlete like mm -hmm. it was it was explained to me by like a psychologist, by a therapist, mm -hmm. that you know, when a professional career ends, it's like mourning the death of a person, because you have identified as this professional athlete that is this, and there's a whole list of things that comes with that, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden one day they're they are no more. You are sort of becoming a different person, but you have to like acknowledge that in order to move on. I think in a healthy way. Yeah, which those jobs found me mountain bikes yeah in a way like i've always ridden every bike but i didn't really ride a mountain bike until i started working at bell because i was going to world cup mountain bike races and seeing these people ride and i'm like i'm i really like riding bikes more than i like watching bikes so i was like i can do this and started yeah. riding more i yeah. got a real bike and and started riding more but then what i noticed what what had been missing since my bmx competitive career ended which at this point was almost three years you know and like Walking away from that stuff was not easy and like going to being able to go to a skate park and not ride the way that I thought people were expecting to me to. Mm -hmm. I didn't have fun for a long period of time. Yeah. So I wasn't riding very much um, because of that. And I was I was, you know, I, I, I'm not going to say I was getting depressed, but I was sort of like losing that that fun aspect, that fire, that spark to things. What's what's getting me up at night? Could, like dreams or yeah what's gonna get me up in the morning because i'm gonna ride later in the day but what i learned when i started riding mountain bikes is it wasn't necessarily it's bmx or it's this mountain bike or it's this thing it's the the key i don't know i say the key to life and the key to moving on past that stuff is having moments of personal progression like mm -hmm. as long as i'm progressing each day then i i feel good you know like it might be progressing as a husband or progressing as a father or in this case, when I found mountain bikes, that's when it clicked for me. Because when I started riding mountain bikes, all of my skills from the time I was born riding BMX and motocross, you combine that into mountain bikes, it, it worked for me. I was, I was improving at a quick rate. Yeah. I was learning. I yeah. was, it was impressive. I was and I think you're, allow you're allowed to suck. Yeah, it felt good to suck. Right. right? You know, like I think, that's, I, think that's, I think that's where a lot of bike riders, BMX, lifelong BMXers, they find this avenue where they're like dude i kind of suck at this and i and i'm getting better where we've all plateaued on bmx in a certain degree mm -hmm. or have gone down and it's and it's fun it's fun to suck at something and be like oh i can and there's no just as you said you show up to the park and there's an expectation that you're good at it the, there's no expectations with yeah that. so i think that's i think that's the appealing part to a lot of people yeah which and makes I think sense and, and right around this time i think is when the whole like cte thing was hitting mm-hmm and people, you know, that's when the whole, the movie came out and they're talking about the head injuries and then yeah. we started seeing it come in in action sports yeah. and, and those conversations. And like, I've, I've had a lot of head injuries. Like I've been KO'd over 30 times for sure. And mm -hmm. through some ballpark figures based on like, 
you know, just averages, you know, I've probably had 80 to 100 concussions. So I'm on that list, right? Like I should have that. Yeah. But I decided when I found that thing about personal progression that that is, that is the key. It's not about like, cause you look at all this, all the so- stories that end badly mm-hmm. with people taking their lives or people getting sucked into depression. It's never just that career coming to an end, which is like, like mourning the death of somebody. And if you don't do it right, these things are going to, they're going to come up and get you. Right. Um, but it's also like coming to grips with what's next and not having that personal progression. You, you, you can only be in one place at the same time. Right. And there's, there becomes this, you know, this why in the road, am I going to go towards positivity or am I going to go towards negativity? Mm -hmm. And I think it's really hard to deal with the negativity stuff with the head injuries and the CT. That's ultimately what it is. It's like people fall into this depression, but everybody falls into a depression at some time, but it's the lack of being able to deal with it is what the CT is. Not having the right tools. That is the symptom. But I think I've, I've convinced myself and I've, the override is personal progression and choose what that is. For me, it's bikes one day. For me, it's being a dad another day. Maybe it's working on a trail this day. But if I have that, it, it keeps me, keeps my fire fueled. Like sure, there's days where, you know, everybody has a hard day, but I think that that's something that anyone finishing a professional career of some sort, they need to come to terms with. It's never going to be the way that it was. Mm-hmm. And then find that thing that's going to fill your cup and just keep progressing in life, you know? And that will wake you up every day. And that yeah. will keep you going. That'll be those dreams that wake you up at night and you're like, can't wait for tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, I mean, is it, was it, I feel like for you, it was easy to kind of find that next thing, or at least it appears that way from the outside. But it, for, for certain people, it becomes difficult, you know, where they can't, they can't find that like next thing that they enjoy. And it's always looking back, you know, like, is there, mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, you mentioned therapist. Was there, was there, was there a point where you're like, I need somebody that is smarter than me to, to help guide me through this? Or was it, or was it a byproduct? Um, I think I learned, I kind of just like figured it out mm-hmm. through experiencing it. And then through having conversations with therapists later, I learned that stuff. Okay. And really like grabbed onto like, okay. And then I trusted it. Like, okay, that is the thing. Let's keep doing this. Mm-hmm. Um, like kind of confirmation of like, <clears throat> things confirmation of thoughts and processes right. in the end yeah yeah that makes but sense. that's that's probably why it worked right because yeah. nobody told me to do it and i don't know if you've heard this one but like that you stop you stop uh like you stop aging or you st- you stop growing up the day you sign your first professional contract that's also something that a therapist told me <laughs> wait what is that hold on like, like, me- like yeah yeah your attitude like you do not you do not like mentally you don't get you don't like so i'm looking for a word here no you said it right i just couldn't grasp it so i needed to hear it twice yeah you like, stop you stop growing up the day you sign your professional contract yeah, that's when you stop growing up yeah like you're that age forever yeah yeah and i was 15 <laughs> when i signed my first so dennis contract. is 14 so i'm still 15 yeah <laughs> which is sick because my daughter's 15 and now we like we're like eye to eye it's perfect <laughs> it does keep you young that's yeah. a that's a good quote yeah i yeah. mean that, i mean that, i think I mean, you keep growing though like I definitely don't feel like I'm 15. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I, th- I think you learn. I think you learn how to. Like, but I can still hang out with like 12 year olds at the skate park and like have a good time riding with them. Have you so, seen the movie Big with Tom Hanks? Yeah, I, don't think I so. feel like you haven't seen Big. I don't think so. I feel I like that, that movie every day of my life. Huh. Yeah, like yeah, you just a child. He, turn, he turns into an adult and has to like conform to adult life. He has like a big job in the city and he gets a girlfriend and all these things. But yeah. he's actually a 14 year old kid. Huh. Yeah. Kind of what it feels like. Yeah. No, I think that's one of the coolest things about BMX is that you're always surrounded by people twice your age and people twice as young as you eventually. And it's like yeah. you just learn how to relate with everyone. Yeah, I think it's just when it when it ends. Is that that's the hard part. Yeah, those are, those like, are that words. Is, that, are, is, that is incredibly words. incredibly insightful. And yeah, I think it, it is it is the progression. Said. It is the, those small little wins and those small things and finding that that next thing. And it's like it's like it, you gotta I, move the love, you know. Yeah. You can't just like keep the love over here and get mad over here because it, it stayed with being I'm Alan Cook, a professional bike rider, and that's it. Yeah. Like you yeah. move the love and separate it into like three or four or five different things now and you spread that all over and just keep progressing with all of it. Yeah. yeah. For totally. sure. And like that's and that stuff, like ultimately those moments, like those opportunities that you said something earlier, like it was easy for you. Seems like it was easy for me to find that. That is a synopsis of like all of the situations I've found myself. I'm yeah, like, yeah. 
I've been so lucky with the opportunities that have been given to me, but that I've also been super lucky to capitalize on a lot of those opportunities. Like, yeah. It hasn't always been easy. Of course, I've had ups and downs and like hard times, but if you like look back in the grand scheme of things, like I made finals at my second contest and was factory sponsored, supported by brands my the rest of my career. Like that yeah that shit does not happen exactly today. yeah like, like you, you had a conversation with napolitan he's like how does it happen you know and, you, and yeah. you're like oh just do do you do just you go get whatever. a photo on the magazine yeah, yeah. And they'll call you <laughs> he's like where are those guys where are those yeah where are it, these is, it is it is interesting how that that shit works and i i i it's funny i had this conversation recently because i always felt like uh being a try hard was like a negative thing when i was a kid and just like you know stop fucking trying you stop forcing it because because it just what will be will be and that always worked for me and now that i'm older i'm like dude no you have to try <laughs> you do have to try you really it's like it won't fall into place all the time like you really do have to like put effort in and and go after every opportunity just as you said like uh and and go after it because it it just doesn't work that way for most people yeah most of those opportunities only come by once yeah and if you and if you fucking pass on it you know it, shit won't happen again that's like the commentating thing yeah the, exactly no that's like, what i was saying is like hey, can you do this you could have got sure. a little nervous you're like, like you're like yeah. no but yes i could have been like are yeah. you gonna pay me and they're like oh this guy but yeah i didn't even like i was just like Let's this is it. never gonna happen again yeah but yes yeah exactly also yeah. it's like the sickest spot to watch the event <laughs> <laughs> it seems like the best of everything like it's good for the sport because of having your knowledge to announce every trick perfectly I'm not, and, I, I'm not, dude, have you seen a meal go down the course? Yeah. <laughs> it's so Sometimes hard. you guys fuck up a little bit. <laughs> dude, <laughs> so, I, I've given up when he starts, when he starts spinning, cause he spins, spins all the ways, tail ups all the ways, bar spins all the ways. Yeah. And mixes them in each run. So you'll, you'll notice like. You guys do a great job though. You'll notice when he starts getting, I'm like, it'll always be like, and here he goes with mixing up the back and forth. Of, like, cause I can't tell. Like, yeah. He's so yeah. clean at both. I just can't tell sometimes. But where i was going is it, it also gets you to those events for free i'm sure dude and like, it's a huge benefit for my job like part of, part of my job is market research so it's like walking into retailers and saying like asking them questions about specializing hey what are we doing right what are we doing wrong what what should we start doing what should we stop doing who's doing it better and then all of a sudden you're getting paid and flown for free to these events where every person in that area of the world is going to go to meet up dude i'm able to get <laughs> all, sick, I'm man. Able, and i'm racing i'm racing all these elite so you, downhill races oh nice. and i'm so i'm in the shuttle with these people and i'm like noticing a, a brand that might show up like i had never seen that brand before but now it's on 12 bikes on this trailer like yo what's i gotta look into this so i'm collecting all this information and i'm bringing it back to the people that are developing the bikes and we're making them what people want mm. it's pretty sick and that's it's a huge value to the brand and they <laughs> see that and they support that mm -hmm. it's pretty cool very cool it keeps me riding and yeah you're riding without yeah. the pressure of like you don't have to do good at that no you just get to have fun racing which yeah. is probably gonna lead to you doing pretty fucking good at them eventually. it's just always fun it's fun dude it's so different are you doing better and better at the races or do you just kind of keep it in a nice neutral medium are you spot? making finals uh i've well, it's different, right? Like I've made the I live feed. So if you qualify top 20, you're on the live feed. And I've made the live feed. I've qualified top 20 in Australia last year or something like that. And then in Canada. And that's top 20, everyone goes. Like that's everyone. It's not like just yeah, a. It's not a World Cup. So it's not like the top ranked people in the world. But it's all like the guys that win the big World Cups are the guys. There are those people are racing these crank work races. Yeah. My, I think my best mountain bike result in a race was. At Crankworks Whistler, out of like a hundred pros, I got twenty fifth. That was like the best I've ever done, and I'm that's like more than I thought I'd ever do. And that's a freestyle contest. This is a dumb question. Freestyle contest, right? No, this is a race. this is like a race. This is a downhill. You're, you're race. fucking racing yeah. mountain bikes. Dude, downhill so racing. It's so different. Than I, the, it's top of the mountain to the bottom of the mountain. Alan, I'd like to refer you to the comments on the Brandon Senrock <laughs> podcast, where every mountain bike dude that was like. Get that fucking guy out of there. It doesn't know anything. <laughs> yeah, I don't know like, anything. can't believe Crankworks. Up. Okay, is a race. <laughs> Crankworks is a festival. It's, <laughs> All a right. mountain bike, it's a mountain bike festival. They do pump track, All right. slalom, downhill, joyride stuff. Like okay. Crankworks right. right. Festival. Okay. That's, yeah, they have everything. All right. All right. And All there's right. like four of them a year, five of them a year. There's four of them now, yeah. yeah. New Zealand, Australia. I refer to it a bunch as Austria, like, because I Canada. always watch them, like, as far as BMX, where there's street event here, you know, 
video it's, part. It's all in one spot, right? Yeah. 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 And I always just like, yeah. we need to put everything together because yeah. that's what mountain biking did to like make this like amazing community where BMX is 10 different things scattered, you know, like there's a premiere, but if you're a park rider, you're probably like, I'm not going to that video premiere yeah. just because yeah. it's not, not anything against any other, the sport, but yet people will. BMX is separated into 10 things where mountain bikes, like we're mountain biking. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of the, the feel I've got from, I mean, there's like, my it's like a feast. A little bit. It's like a feast though. Cause it's like, it's a little bit yeah. of Montpellier. Is, for sure. Is yeah. Feast you know? is like so, the one thing that makes it like, yeah. let's all be together. Yeah. For X this. games, but X I mean, games, yeah, X games too. Know, there's just, a couple little just things. Just saying a couple, but, you but know, they like run I, their get, own I get it though, but it's like, it's a, it's our own thing. But let's say we never, they don't ever, racing's never, never involved in anything. True. And racing is fucking Fair BMX, enough. you yeah. know? And it's like, it's yeah. never put into anything like, but it's so how it used different. to be. Yeah. The downhill stuff is fun for me because it's so different. Yeah. And that progression thing, like just being there, I'm learning, I'm progressing, I'm figuring it out. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's a race against the clock. So I'm not like, I have nobody to blame but myself if I crash. And there's no take my hand off here, do this trick that doesn't really feel maybe that good, but I'm doing it because it scores good. Yeah. It's that's like it's funny. My, that my kind of shit gets old. go to when people are like ask me to do tricks or do this or do that. I'm like, oh, tricks are for kids, man. <laughs> I don't do that anymore. I just try to go fast around turns. Yeah, Somebody probably yeah. told you that when you're so young, you're like, that is the worst comment ever. <laughs> now you're like, that's a good comment. Yeah, <laughs> now I see why he told me that. <laughs> um, I guess specialized mountain bikes. I don't know what else. I feel I I don't know. I always what what brands are under specialized? Are there uh, Revol is like a parts parts brand, house okay. parts brand. They do wheels. Uh huh. Um, but that's pretty much the only other brands. Oh, that's yeah. it. Okay. All right. And then we do you, our own tires. We do our own everything. Didn't you do a side company or something? Yeah. Well, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna do the bathroom thing. We'll okay. Get into it. Yeah. Uh, so you have a side gig hustle. Is it yours? I don't know anything. Yeah. I don't even know the name of it. Good to times, be honest. Pro. Good times crew. I thought there was like something like 20 to 1. 50 to 1. 50 to 1. That's my, those are my friends. Oh, okay. Uh, out of the UK. That's a different brand. Okay. I yeah. thought that was you. All right. Yeah, good I'm times just, crew. I'm just tight with all those guys for all right. sure. And all definitely right. like feeding off of some of that stuff. Definitely yeah. some inspiration there, but in a little bit different way. Okay. But it, you, you said something earlier about like, I think maybe when we were talking about local exposure to or something like you even said it, you said, yeah, it's just a bunch of, bunch of good times, you know? Yeah. And that's kind of what the idea of it is. I think came up in my mind. I was like, after going through the 2008 financial crisis, like, because at that time, you know, when BMX was good to me financially, I was investing. I was, well, hold on. I was blowing at least a third of the money, <laughs> but I was investing the other two thirds yeah. in real estate because that's what everybody was doing at the time. Yeah. My brother was a mortgage that's better broker. better than most people. My brother was a mortgage broker. Super easy for me to buy houses. I think I bought two houses. Your at brother least. does so much shit. At least two. I know. He's <laughs> How more, many brothers do you have? Uh, just, just one guy. I know. Just one. Yeah. It's just like, one, but there's five of them. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. How many, it sounds like you have 10 brothers. Um, so brother yeah, needs to come to the There was the a podcast. couple of times I bought houses and like never signed papers because he had like power of attorney and he oh. just like do the thing. But I was, in, I was thought I was doing the right thing. So then when I stopped competing and I wanted to come back to California, I would like sort of skip the challenge of the next phase of life by having enough money to then buy a house and then you own a home in california you're you can survive the rest of your life you'll be all right yeah right yeah. like if you flat out owned it cash. yeah yeah i was gonna say i own one but i, I don't mean that's like not having, guaranteed i don't mean having the title i mean like <laughs> yeah. owning it yeah 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 right? a paid off house in california you're chilling so that yeah, was the goal like, property yeah. i'm gonna so invest in, in san real diego here, in particular. real estate there do as much as i can and then when it's time to move back i'm gonna fire sale it all and then i'll have that chunk to get me started in the rest of my life yeah okay but it all went away with the 2008 thing like yeah i didn't make it all disappeared yeah so you lost I, I, so did you sell in 2008 too, or what, what how did it so I not sold, work for you? I sold when I moved from Greenville, I, I like sold the two houses that I had there. And basically one of them, I probably lost like 40 grand on and the other one with closing costs and everything. I broke even crazy. But the one that really killed me was, uh, I had a condo in South Lake Tahoe and I think when I bought it, it was like maybe 130 grand or something like that. And then two years later, it was like. 390 mm -hmm. and i was like that's the plan this is what's happening this is cool. great. Yeah. and then two years later it was worth like 40. yeah why did that's you crazy. sell it because of this? i didn't i didn't sell that one i ended up having to foreclose on it just didn't make sense because oh, that was all yeah. that was all at the same time when like i didn't have specialized anymore i didn't have yeah. you know boost mobile anymore now i'm working and to restart day. you wanted you needed the cash yeah, yeah. but you I weren't renting it out 
the apartment? I was renting it out to my aunt, but it was like not enough to losing money every month, losing money every month. Yeah. And finally, when it was like came to the thing, like, well, it doesn't make sense to keep blowing the money that I don't have on -hmm. this thing that I I don't know when the things are going to turn around. Yeah. About 10 years. Yeah. I look at it. I look at it now and I'm like, damn. Well, <laughs> I mean, worked, yeah, I have, a, I have a friend who we all know. I won't say his personal business out there, but that, you know, had a condo and it took, you know, he bought it at the peak essentially. And it took 10 years for it to come back around for it to be yeah. like, oh, I can make a profit now. Yeah. And that's I mean, that's, crazy. that's how it is. But it just sort of coincided at the same time when my income was cut yeah. by two thirds. Yeah. Gone. Yeah. So yeah, I just couldn't, I just can't keep it. I so think- now that's why you went to therapy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, jo- no. I'm joking. I'm joking. But, but yeah, I mean, so that's that, sounds, gnarly, that sounds insane. Yeah. Like, Cause you three think you houses have, and yeah. then sponsors and I have, the, bu- houses I have the bus sponsors at the same gone. time too. Oh, yeah. that was like a hundred thousand dollar bus. Probably. It was like 150. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Fuck. Crazy. Back then that thing, but, but, while, thing was but nice. while I had it, I wasn't having to pay for it much because all of those giant logos on there were in addition to my contracts. Yeah. So that almost covered the mortgage on the bus yeah. and the gas was my travel budget. Mortgage on a motorhome. Yeah. So Holy I mean, it is a home. It's, yeah. yeah. But all that stuff went away all at the same time. Yeah. All while I was having the most expensive thing happen in life, having a kid and then also trying to figure out how to have a job. Fuck. So I all these, all this stuff going on and there's the behind the scenes of like, there was some big stuff behind the scenes too. Like the yeah. Alan Cook. The financial Allen Cook too, like that was you're pretty heavy in there. Three houses and a a bus that's worth a a house in Tennessee. Yeah, yeah, it was. It, there was a lot of stuff, but that was that was what people were doing. Like, cause well, people were making money. Well, I, when I just watched Blackout. that thing. I just watched that thing turn <laughs> for some reason. Pause. Uh, our camera went out there for for a moment for some reason, so I fixed it. Maybe, but um, uh, yeah. Fucking 2008. Oh, yeah. We're talking Son about of that, a bitch. That crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, fucking That's crazy. Real, real estate. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I was, I was, so you sold at the complete wrong time. I mean, I had to give it up. Yeah. I sold a couple of them, but I had to give up another one. And I, yeah, I basically just had to give up on the real estate investment thing while yeah. all the money was in there. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. That's so rough because you had so much invested from this amazing career. And it was, yeah. It's all about timing, right? Timing, it is. Yeah. It is. And then now it's funny, but it's, it's how it works, right? Like you, you get, you get, and you give, but it's look like, at you now, it's like, now I'm starting to like, cause specialize, they do take care of the employees. And I feel like the number, like I'm looking at the number I get paid and I'm like proud senior, like hell yeah. senior marketing. I'm, I'm doing it. Cool. But at the same time, <laughs> look what's happening in the financial world right now. Like inflation. Yeah. yeah. I'm kind of in the same spot. Like, yeah. even though I'm making more like, and you live in one of the most expensive places in the for one sure. of the most expensive countries for sure and i'm and i'm knowingly making those sacrifices those things that you get with money yeah to be there and to have the life i live there and that's really what it comes down to is like you might look at all those situations of like losing all that money and not having that safety net and those those trials and tribulations or whatever but it it made me realize the things and it sounds so cliche it made me realize what was worth it and what meant something and it's something that's really kind of been there with me along the whole way is being able to share the experience with people rather than just show them things. And that's like what I take into all of the marketing or the PR, or doesn't matter what I'm doing. I'm not showing people things. I'm sharing something with them. Mm-hmm. And that's how you kind of make that emotional connection. And because of my BMX career, people care what I'm saying. It's like some people care. I'm not, I don't think I'm like all high and mighty or whatever, but people listen a little differently. Yeah. Yeah. And I have you've had real experiences. Yeah, but I, I, I have an opportunity to enhance people's experience through bicycles because of all that knowledge. And that's the shit that can't be taken by a financial crisis or a housing crisis. So I put a lot of weight on that, maybe too much, maybe to where it's like a detriment to my family in a way, because I'm not like motivated to be this high powered, successful guy that's making all this money and have all this fancy stuff because I know. It could all go away in that, but mm. the experiences that I can bring people through bikes with my job and with all the things, like I see that and that lights my fire and it fuels me and it keeps me going and nobody can ever take it. Yeah. It's never yeah. going anywhere. Yeah. That's, that's important. That's important. That's that personal progression. Yeah. You know, um, what, it, I guess the, 
I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, I'm kind of like, where do we go from here? But it's, I mean, it's, it's an important message, but where does, um, like your, your career take you right now? Like you're, are you lifetime specialized essentially? I mean, I don't have, I've never looked for another place. Like it's definitely my home. Like, is it, is it my story? If I'm writing, if I'm writing the book, it's definitely a part of it. Like I'm, I wouldn't take I wouldn't take either chapters that specialized away even for right now. And I'm, I'm, I'm fully in like, it's an, it's a gnarly job. There's a lot of things to do, but I'm loving almost every moment of it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but at some point I think I would like to have a job where I didn't have to travel as much and do something where, you know, where, where I'm grinding and I'm the end beneficiary or my community is the end beneficiary, the people that are really tight with me. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, that's like the, we're talking about side hustle. That's the good Good times crew, you know? It's just a way of looking at things and and f- putting that focus on the good times because that's the shit that people can't take away from you. Like this isn't something that I'm that I started to make a business and to make money. It started out as when I was working at Santa Cruz, there was a few of us that on Tuesdays it was bike night at Cunningham Lake Cunningham Park in San Jose. So we would leave work early and we would go over and ride the skate park. I would BMX, a couple of people would skateboard, a couple of people would BMX, and then afterwards we'd get burritos. Like yeah, like. Like our version of intramural kickball, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> and we call ourselves the Good Times Crew, and we would like, why doesn't anybody else want to come? Like, don't they want to have a good time? Like yeah, all these yeah. things, and just like it's really putting that the emphasis on how it doesn't really matter what you're doing, you can make it a good time. Yeah, you can make it community, and you can benefit something greater than yourself. So like, we put on events, like we've had rallies in Santa yeah. Cruz, where like. You know, people register, there's number plates, we go, we ride around town, there's challengers, there's winners, there's prizes, we raise a bunch of money and we give it all to the trail advocacy mm-hmm. to help build trails, you know, things like that. Or, you know, have this funny, if you guys ever get a chance in September, you want to have a good time in the, in the forest, <laughs> I put on this clunker ride called the Cruiser Classic. Um, it's a good times crew thing. So we're doing clothes, you know, good times yeah. We have a full line of clothes, but we're also doing events and going out and like meeting people and Sharing connecting with people yeah. and sharing experiences yeah we do this this 15 mile clunker ride on old school bikes in tahoe or in the sierra foothills mm-hmm. it's it's such a good time and we usually raise like four to five thousand dollars and just give all the money back to the to the people that are maintaining those trails that are helping us have a good time and it's sick like maybe i'm i guess it's a different venue it's different viewership so this won't indemnify myself too much but we don't we don't get permits we cap it at a hundred. It's forty bucks. We're never gonna make money. We're never gonna blow it up. Yeah. We ask the horse people because we stay at a horse campground. We ask them if it's okay. We don't book over them. It's it's gonna stay what it is, and it's like the sickest event ever. People on bikes in the forest having fun. There's a lot of substance. There's a lot of mm-hmm. a lot of partying. It's, yeah. It's a good time. That's cool. That's that's uh keep it small. Keep it cool. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it keep it something that like people want to do yeah but at the same time if i can learn from these other experiences with in the business world and like working for special if i can learn that stuff and like if somehow good times crew developed into an opportunity that that could be my main focus i think that would probably be the book i wrote you know at some point that's where it would go makes sense you know doing it for yourself is is you know as being you were a business owner previously you just happened to be the business you know you were the senior marketing manager for yourself <laughs> yeah for, for alan sure. cook inc <laughs> so uh you've been a business owner before and uh, you know i'm sure you you enjoy it is there um takeaways from your time in bmx that that transfer into the mountain bike world and then and then you know i don't know i feel like we should talk about mountain bike versus bmx in some capacity yeah i mean it was funny. It, it, it is funny that I and my my wife of all people gives me shit mm-hmm. about being a mountain biker <laughs> and working in the mountain bike world because she remembers when I would come back from or I would be talking about how lame mountain biking was because yeah. it was like when the people that like the first five popular famous free ride mountain bikers that I could that I knew because <clears> I was BMX Hans no way Ray. were people that couldn't cut it in BMX right yeah. there was this like thing. It was like almost a stigma. Like if you did a BMX contest or a mountain bike contest, it was in you were a BMXer because you couldn't make it. Yeah. As as a BMXer. Yeah. Uh, that was a, that, that was, was a truth in a lot of ways. Yeah. You know, I mean, Nikolai. 
I mean, it, I've had, incre- I've, incredibly, I've with him. incredibly, yeah. incredibly I'm, successful. I was his boss at Specialized for like three years. Yeah. I was running that side of the He would have made it in BMX. He just like got out of it when he was so young. He like, probably he, got he, out of it because we were assholes too. <laughs> probably, yeah. I've had oh, sit downs yeah. with him now yeah. like, hey man, like I'm sorry. Like we were not nice to you. You yeah. were threatening and I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> I, was, I always like Nikolai. I had his back. <laughs> well, you were a bigger man than me. Yeah, I was cheering him on. <laughs> he always had a weird he had a weird image. Like I just remember him like playing piano and like it was like it was more his dad yelling at him in Russian on the course. Yeah. That's what got me. Yeah. It was definitely a weird I remember thing. being sick. He was just like a tiny little kid and you're like, what the hell? Where'd he come from? But then he just disappeared. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I guess Alan was yelling him out of BMX, get the fuck out of here. Did he actually have like a negative experience with you in part? Yeah, he, he didn't have anything that like pinpointed, but no. I he seems so cool. I can like, just he seems super cool. Yeah. I can just remember back in the day, like vibing him and not being cool. And I was like, yo, man, I'm sorry. Like you showed me you're sick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess he's not the, not the necessary, the, not, not really the example, but I mean, he, you know, it was like he dis. from my point of view, it was, he disappeared. And then he came back in mountain biking. And yeah. Like, oh, shit, switched. that's that dude. So. Yeah. I remember when we went to Santa Cruz with you, like when you took us riding a long time ago, we went into the warehouse and I was like, so how did mountain biking become like a bigger thing than it was when it was nothing, you know? And you went, look, here's a bike from because you have like a bunch of bikes from different oh, yeah, years and you're like this is like yeah. when you had a choice of bmx and mountain biking and now here's a mountain bike and they the old mountain bikes you know because they look fucking insane they were terrible and it was like every time oh my god yeah. just like bmx you know but yeah. bmx was ahead of it so bmx bikes got nicer way faster yeah but it made me realize like yeah that was like the the mountain bike someone would be like try my mountain bike and i'd be like this thing's a pile of shit. But now someone gives you your mountain bike and it's like a Ferrari, you know, like yeah, they're, can they're ten thousand dollars and they're just like fucking insane, you know. Yeah, like, there are some crazy expensive mountain bikes it, out there. They it just changed, sure. and that made me that was like a turning point in my head of like, oh yeah, that's why I didn't like mountain bikes. Now now let me try one. And I was yeah. like, oh, these are nice. This is fun. Yeah, you can literally ride mount my mountain bike now hundreds of miles with never doing more than putting air in the tires and lubing the chain, and it doesn't break. It's yeah. sick. Yeah, is it? I, I don't know. I always there's feel a tool like a, for a, a bike for everything, just like there's a tool for every job. Yeah. Like BMX is so fun for some things and mountain bikes is so fun for some things. I'm yeah. trying, I'm trying to think how to phrase this without sounding like an asshole. So Go ahead, sound it, like an asshole. But I always think <laughs> every mountain biker already I mean, hates you. <laughs> I'm just I, ex- I accept. <laughs> no, they don't. Uh, I'm I always, a mountain biker and I don't hate you. I, I envision, I envision there being like a, you know, a smoky boardroom where they're like, they're sitting in there, they have cigars, and they're like, fuck, we we made BMX bikes in 2008. They didn't accept us. You know, like, and then they're like, how do we, how do we get BMXers on bikes? And I then, think you're and then, right. y- yeah. And <laughs> but I'm not in that room. Exactly. I know. I know. And so, but this is where my kids. There's is. nothing wrong with the BMXers being on the mountain bike. So as long as, you know, well, no, 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 no. I haven't finished, I haven't so fin- I haven't finished okay, my plot ahead, yet. So, so they're on, they're like, all right, like we're going to make tiny mountain bikes. We're going to skip BMXers. They're never going to, you know, it goes, it goes, they have the chart and it goes born BMX bike, mountain bike, road bike, (laughs) BMX bike gone. Is that the, yeah. And they're like, how do we do it? (laughs) And then they're, you know, and it's like, I feel like it at Stasic. (laughs) <laughs> yeah who's, a, who's uh, this guy yeah. and 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 it's like you see these you know you see these 20 inch well that goes straight 20, to biking 20 inch mountain bikes you see these you know like it i don't know i just see i see so much BMX, e-bikes 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 well that's a whole other so that's a whole <laughs> other topic but i just see so much of bmx within mountain biking that it like it, it just it's scary for the industry because I feel like there is that element of the, the, the cycle that we all grew up with was, you know, we, the first bike is a BMX bike. That's what's under the Christmas tree. Oh my God, look at this brand new BMX bike. And it's like, sometimes it's a, a lot of times it's a fucking mountain bike these days. And they just, yeah. yeah, And it just, and I feel like the marketing is going maybe a little bit. Yeah. But I say, cause even back in the day you had the friends that, you know, like the JD Swangins or whatever, 
Southern California was very BMX dominated, but there was the kids that did get them out. Like, yeah, but there's more and more and more of that yeah, is what I'm saying. Is sure. It gets to a, it gets to a point where it's more and more and more and there's less and less and less BMX and then less and less bikes sold and then less and less of us have a job. And then we don't want that. Yeah. And that's a, that's the thing is like, you know, and then my smoky boardroom is a, a funny way of saying yeah. it, of not trying me trying okay. to not be an asshole. Yeah. But like. There is like scary elements of it where it's like, it's like if you have joyride stuff where it's like all the crazy tricks and freestyle mountain biking is this thing. And then you have, you know, you have these dudes on Instagram riding street MTB and stuff like that. And then you have the, you know, it's like, damn, where is the fucking BMX bike fit in anymore? And it's just, I don't know. It's, it's, it's scary. I, don't, I think it'll always it, fit in though you know when you it, like, it does it will of course because it'll always be counterculture to whatever mountain biking is of course you're gonna you're gonna hate me if, when i say this and what? i'm saying it somewhat sarcastically yeah it'll live forever it's an olympic sport man <laughs> <laughs> that side of bmx will live forever all of yeah. it will live forever i don't know even though that's yeah. not the bmx i know yeah <laughs> yeah cannot watch those well contests. i mean dude i mean like i i'm i, I mean i think the i think we did we out that there's a mountain bike real BMX? I think we did we on podcast. Did. So fuck it at this point. Uh, that you know the thing was that we talked about years ago. It was like the real MTB thing fucking kicked off, right? And then I was proxy pissed. He wasn't pissed, but I was proxy pissed because he had the you know Nora Cup winning video part. His banger is a whip off a roof. Homie's got a real MTB part backflips off the same roof in the first clip and then it's like the real mtv stuff kicks off and it's like what happens when real bmx doesn't have to happen because real mtv did better real mtv is happening right now it's a good question and then that's fucking twenty thousand dollars in rider fifty thousand dollars in riders and filmers pockets that's no longer in bmx and it's like that's not your fault. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you're here. So I I'll, be your, I'll be your punching bag. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, but that's, a, but that's like a, that's like a, a, a macro or micro. I think in the industry, we call it high level because you're looking at it from far away, I think is what they, yeah, do. a high, le- a, a high level of instance <laughs> of, of it being, you know, of, of representing what is happening in, in towns everywhere. And, and it's like, can you stop it? No. Of course not, but it, it's it's crazy when I just see that stuff, and I then I, and then I tweak out in my head because being part of the part of the industry, and then I can't get all lovey dovey. Well, they're just having fun, my, you know. My it's point like, of yeah, like it, my, mountain bikes are sick. Yes, I'm sure, but like also, fuck. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. <laughs> the old Dennis optimistic point of view on it is the only way to not be fearful of it is to not worry about these other things taking care of our shit. Yeah, where mountain yeah. biking was the like. You guys are whack. This is not cool. Like push, push, push. And you guys were like, not you guys, because you came into it when it was already blossoming, kind, yeah. of, kind of in the middle of the mountain bike heyday growing. But you guys didn't care about all that. Like not. It's so part- much more welcome, a way more welcoming group of people. Well, you yeah, got yeah. Beat, mountain biking grew itself. Whoops, sorry. Where Ooh, BMX wow. grew itself in the beginning. And then it just got so big, it got taken over by do tours, X games, this and that. So BMX is just like, woo. Like we don't have to do anything. We just make a company and everything sells. Whereas now it's like we're in your guys' shoes, mountain biking shoes where it was in whatever years those were when you were winning X Games and stuff and mountain bikes were falling apart going down a mountain. Yeah. You know, yeah. like that's that's yeah. where I think like Trey Swamp Fest and people doing their own thing to regrow it is like what's necessary right now because BMX people are lifers and that's yeah, that's what like I see is like for granted. It's no. people fucking love it. There's yeah. diehard. There's no posers in BMX. Like, you know what I mean? You, yeah. you ride because you ride. Like, if you have a BMX bike, you're like, oh, yeah. you're part of the family. I think culturally, I think it's always the same. I see it's, what like, you're it's like, oh, yeah, like I skateboarded. And you're like, ah, did yeah. You? Th- that's my optimistic view on it. There's no fear if you like don't look at it. Like, <laughs> did you? <laughs> but it's the same for like, oh, I mountain bike. You're like, ah, do you? Yeah, yeah. You might, maybe. You know, like one, yeah, thing's, one thing's true is you can tell which mountain bikers rode BMX bikes before. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's a, that's an ongoing joke, isn't it? And yeah. yeah, it's an interesting thing that it's an interesting question that you bring up. And I think, you know, you have to look at I, I certainly do not have the answers, but yeah, I think yeah. the first place you have to look is the powers, the powers that be. What are they doing? 
Like mm-hmm. the, the the people that are pulling the strings of the BMX industry, whether it's brands, whether it's media, like you guys, like what what is it's exactly what, what I'm do, saying. What are we doing to lift this? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. We're like the BMX day thing that elevates BMX. Everything that like there is going on elevates it. Like if there was a swamp fest or a BMX day every weekend, BMX would be as big as skateboarding probably. Cause when those weekends do happen, it's like, oh my God, BMX is the sickest thing ever. But then when there's a two month gap of like, eh, there wasn't anything I mean, that interesting. I think that, it's like, I think that's a, I think going back to that, I think that's a high level thing. And I think that's important, but I think BMX needs to be like more attainable. Like you just like go and jump shit. And not be fucking dangerous all the time. And that's kind of like what Moeller and Magoo were talking about. That's I, know a problem fi- too. I know it was five hours, so you're not going to listen to that. But it was like, that's what they were talking about. It was like, dude, it's that's so fucking crazy point. that like, who the fuck wants to ride big air? Like the who the fuck wants to, yeah, who the fuck wants to, stuff? yeah. Or who wants like, to get really good at one of these skate parks that it's like, oh yeah, we ride skate parks, but it's like, okay, I have this shitty little street plaza yeah, and I'm looking up to like Garrett Reynolds and that shit's like unattainable for me or i have this square bowl that's 13 feet deep over here like yeah. there's nothing really fun here to ride yeah like i guess i'll just grab a mountain bike and go to that sweet trail kind of down the road you that's know kind of like, what they were talking the attainable about thing is like, is a huge like yeah fact. just like jump over a fucking trash can or something you Dude. know like make it look fucking cool when you do it a cinder block and a piece of plywood yeah and or it's like every, what city, every city has a dope skate park that's meant for skateboarders to have fun if every city like somehow got a yeah. dirt park or a pump track you know yeah. it's just like it's it's a problem with we don't have the fucking it's the system stuff right? the it's system. the way the system is set up right like in order to grow anything you have to make it more accessible yeah but if you make it more accessible then it's too easy and people lose interest exactly so yeah, at what point totally where's the balance line. where's yeah. the balance because and skate parks are everywhere i feel like BMX, they are but they're not for bikes at all like you can people get really good at them in one way or another but usually it's like you're riding like would you would you really ever design this skate park? Yeah. Hell no. Unless it's like the rare one that happens to be good for bikes. But usually they're just like pool coping fucking square bowl in the back or shitty bowl that, yeah, Corey Walsh and Gary are really good at. But that's like the exception, yeah. you know, like anyone else is like, hell no, I'm not riding that. <laughs> yeah, you're terrible with that. Yeah, stuff. you're super bad. I don't want to ride that. I want to ride, Claire- <laughs> I want to ride Claremont or some dirt jumps or some real street, you know, like the only reason I'm riding that is because there's 20 of Cause them. Because you want to hang out with your friends? Yeah, hang out with my friends and there's a bunch of them, you know. Um, so it's like, okay, let's go. When you look back at like BMX and when you see stuff from where you are now and you see BMX, is there like, you're like, ah, oh, what are they doing? Or is there like, or I wish, I wish they would just like, I don't know. It's is not there, my problem. Not your problem. Like I, how much, how much BMX are you taking in on a regular basis? I mean, I would say. Besides watching every single episode of Unclicked. I would say 80%, 80% of my BMX knowledge comes from your website. Oh, okay. It's like my, yeah. da- it's like my morning coffee daily thing. Like I check pink bike, I check vital, vital MTB. Mm-hmm. I check our BMX, I check Thrasher. That's like, those, cool. those yeah. are the things I look wide at. Round, it's a nice wide little, range. Yeah. Cool um yeah i don't know i mean bm who knows you don't so you you send me a text when you get to the boardroom with the smoky with the okay all right you let me know video call just let them know what they're saying yeah about fudger just, they're like we have to kill fudger <laughs> we need to squash him <laughs> get him out of bikes get fudger out <laughs> more money on our end <laughs> yeah no it's not like like i said we're i i hit up be- there for a second before like we're the last rider owned brand yeah like in mountain yeah. biking and yeah. that and it's true what they say it comes from the top and this was one of the things that that like when i went back to specialized it was for sure the initial reason was out of necessity i needed a job mm-hmm. i was not working at santa cruz anymore i needed a job i had connections i hit them up but within the first two weeks of being back there if you will i knew it was the right thing to do because in this <clears throat> not a smoky boardroom but in this uh it's like an auditorium with probably a hundred people. This is pre-COVID. Mike Sinyard, the owner of the company, the guy who founded it, he's t- having a conversation. He opens it up for questions, and somebody asked him a question: "What is something that you would see, or what is something you can share with us about how you looked at the business before that you look at the business now? Hmm. Like, what, what, what do you, what differences can you identify?" And one of the things he talked about is how in the past he saw the business in other brands as competition and as a war Mm -hmm. like this is a war to be the best the number one brand there is whatever that statistic might have been to be the number one and everyone else was a competitor and it was war and that is kind of how the company was ran you know i was super benefit super lucky to be 
at Specialize when it was like the cool bike brand, like maybe not in BMX, but in mountain bike, it was the cool bike brand. Mm -hmm. There was a long period of time where it was not. It was the laughing stock, the big red S and all that stuff. That's kind of the time that Mike was talking about, you know, about seeing it as competition. And, you know, he, he went through some, some spiritual things and some life things and, and, and realized, and this is what he said in the meeting. He said, at some point, I, I realized that it's an opportunity to improve people's lives. Mm. It's not a war. Yeah. And the more that I focus on the rider and give them what they want and improve their riding experience, the better this company will do. Yeah. And, and since he made that realization, the company has shifted and it is, again, the cool brand in mountain biking. There, it's hard for someone to say something bad about Specialized anymore. Yeah. Where yeah. before there was a whole slew of things. So it really does all come from the top. And those are good words, too, because like I was saying, all these companies in BMX want to just make money off sales. But like, where's the jams? Where's the shit? You know, they're out there, but it's like yeah. the more of that, the more fun but the I think- riders have and the more community is built. You can't just expect like nothing going on for people to buy your shit and be support you. It's like market through facilitation. It's the best way to get a return on anything is if you facilitate the end user, the platform to do the thing that they want to do, they're going to love you forever. Yeah, I think I think doing it out of. Uh, not competition because I feel like obviously, you know, if, if brands, if a brand is struggling, it's, you know, uh, when, when you're flush with money, it's easy to make good decisions and mm-hmm. nice decisions and stuff like that. When you're, when you're struggling, you got to do decisions to keep the lights on. Mm-hmm. And so there's, there's issues with that, but I think brands within BMX should work together better in the sense of like, Hey, we're changing the hub width it's because, not a it's, contest. because it's better. And we need to come to a decision to do this because it'll draw a line that, hey, you have an old frame and you need a new frame because the frame, because it's different and you need and you're and and that sort of that sort of element and all that stuff, because you're the hub width is different and then it's actually stronger it, like for for a real reason or the the stem, you know, your handlebar clamp. Those conversations and stuff like that in the mountain bike world. And 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 it's like I feel like in the mountain bike world at least from my very limited knowledge is that specialized kind of dictates those things. They're like, Hey, we're doing a fucking 29.3333333 slash <laughs> seven. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, everybody's like, Oh my God, we need a 29.3333339 wheel because specialized is doing it. So it's like, you guys are lucky in that sense. You guys, I mean, you guys, but like, I mean, that's somebody can dictate, volume, right? Yeah. And somebody can dictate those changes where in BMX, it's like, there's, I, I've been to a fucking bottom bracket meeting 15, 18 years ago, and it was insane. Which bottom bracket do we want? American, I think I remember that. European, or fucking Euro? I can't yeah. remember that. That was the last It week. was insane. Crandall, I think Crandall was the one that organized it, and he literally was just like, and just ripped his hair out and left, basically. <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking nuts. And it's like, dude, well, you can't agree on anything. Like, it just like, because it's stupid for bike shops to carry three different bottom bracket sizes or have this. That was a super annoying situation. Exactly. Three out there. It was insane. Yeah. And it's like BMX needs to come together for the benefit of one, like n- not killing people because the forks haven't changed in 10 years. And then two, fucking selling product and innovation. You know, double diamonds never going to go away. BMX frame is supposed to look this way. Yeah. But there's innovation out there. And it's like, it's okay. And I think that's like BMX is like, there's lots of jams and there's lots of this and, and culture and all that stuff exists. But like, it's hard yeah. to stand out in the BMX world when you look at product right now. Yeah. Like hard goods. They it's all, all kind of look the same. Yeah. It's all. Much. Yeah. And so it's, it's difficult. So either all the same or it's shitty. Create, you know? <laughs> some, create something <laughs> so really and market it marketing. as being better. It's a risk, but I feel like it needs to be done. And I feel like the, the bike has to change in certain ways and make things like not as compatible. I mean, that was the catalyst so. to when, I mean, part of the catalyst to when things exploded at the, at the end of the 90s. Like, yeah. it was for sure X Games blowing up, but mm-hmm. like, Haro was making all those weird shaped frames and they were selling 50,000 pieces per model, like per weird thing, specialized yeah. human. Dude, you know how many? Fucking fat boys on eBay for 400 bucks. Weird shaped things because it was different. It's yeah. Not, it stood yeah. out. But 
ultimately we all got ostracized for that difference by the people that are pulling the strings of the industry i think i think culturally as a as an industry that idea should change you know like it's okay to be different it's okay to make something a little bit weird yeah you know but it's fun to get weird see where it goes yeah yeah <laughs> i don't know it, it's it is crazy um what else would we talk about let me check my list make sure i didn't miss anything. i did i did an edit you did do an edit. So, I do have it. I have it right here. You texted it to me, but I already had it on my list. When we were when we were talking about like the kind of produ helping produce videos and stuff back in the day when I was doing the road trips. Yeah. I mean, I had the. I just want to. I want to interrupt you. If there's no kicker over a railing to barely land on rocks into water, I'm going to be disappointed. That's there's so not insane. that, but there is a there is a kicker in there. You'll get a kicker. <laughs> All right. You'll get a kicker. All right, go ahead. But it was like you know back in those days, I wasn't getting invited to do video projects, so I like didn't. I had to create my own platform to 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 do those video projects. So living in Santa Cruz, you know that that the street R or your bike mind, it never really turns off. Mm -hmm. And as I started riding mountain bikes and finding new things in this community, I would see all these things, like these stunts and these moves, like stuff I want to do. And at some point, you know, I didn't. Oh, I never had a reason. Like nobody was asking me to film a video part. I didn't have a reason to do it. And then when I started this Good Times Crew thing with my buddies, it was like, oh, well, let's. Let's film something like let's go out and do it on my own because I had been seeing all these moves all over town. And at some point there was a shift where I stopped seeing them and they were like staring at me. I'm driving by and they're just like, need to know what this feels like. <laughs> and like, so we were, we had this little crew and we had a reason and we just started filming. And I think it's probably, I'm probably the most proud of it at any video project I've ever done because it was the first time I ever had a part to do part in the post process you know yeah. like i basically scripted out how all the clips were going to lay out and like was able to dictate like the feel of how it unveils and it was super fun and like a really cool creative outlet and it was fun to put myself in that situation that i hadn't been in in a long time where like during my bmx days i always had this 60 40 rule like <clears throat> i wanted to be 60 percent sure i was going to pull it and 40 percent was like yeah. well we'll figure it out that was my comfort zone if yeah. it was if it was less than that it was like that's when shit was getting real and every once in a while you'd end up in those situations where it was like the helicopter yeah where you're like 40 percent sure you're gonna pull it and 60 percent you have no idea what's gonna happen yeah yeah and like i was able to put myself in a lot of those situations and like dude i learned so much through that process and it's it's typical right but like if i knew now what or if i if i knew what i know now back when i was competing in bmx if, I, I feel like my results would have been completely different yeah. like i actually took these stunts serious and like i spent time on it and i was able to use a lot of things i learned from the actual like stuntmen doing those stunt junkies on how to approach these really like dead man moves mm -hmm. where you only get one try yeah you know so i mean i saw i'm pretty <laughs> sure i saw the i saw the banger in here and i was the ender or the ender ender the ender ender <laughs> so we'll save the best for last what is that what is that it's a play on words, you know, dot, dot, dot. I'm an old man. Is All this right. my last edit? This was actually the first clip we filmed. There's your launch ramp. And that's when we knew it was going to be a good one. <laughs> you got out of that good. Yeah. It seemed like, like the grass was wet and I just like slipped. It was a gnarly crash. We got right over the bars and right out of it. <laughs> Stole that straight out of market. Yeah. <laughs> Connor. Using my Mountain Dew for traction on the rocks. <laughs> but yeah, it's just like, like that's down the street from my house. Like. Every, I, every one of these things are known by people in Santa Cruz for sure. All the locations. That's you? Yeah. You lying. It's me, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Jumping off a mountain. Whoa. And it's, it's cool. This is the song uh, is Future Islands. Thank you, Future Islands, for letting me use this music. But like, you're friends with them, right? Yeah. That's insane. They, we used to pay them a couple hundred bucks to play our parties, our Destroyer Fest. Oh, really? Yeah. There's another knockout. Yeah, there's another one. That was lucky that number was 34. <laughs> I was looking away. I didn't see it. Thankfully. That was my friend's first time riding a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> so do you and Christian ever geek out together and go look for spots? Because I feel like there's people who ride like hardtails in the streets, but you guys are like the only, that's like a trail bike, right? Yeah. Yeah. You guys are like the only ones kind of trail bike street riding. Yeah, I think, I think it's probably just. Not us. only ones. I'm sure there's a bunch of that I don't, I'm ignorant to, but. Yeah, I think it's probably in town, like we're probably 
more looking at that stuff with a serious eye. Like I'm, I'm still seeing stuff. So that's like kind of the dot, dot, dot. I yeah. Think, yeah. That's kind of, it happens, but a lot of people who get really into mountain biking usually come from like race routes or dirt routes where you and Christian have those routes, but you also have like the street mind Yeah, where there's not too much of that in mountain biking. I feel like usually people like who get, into I mean, it, from my view, looking at it, like, it looks like a, the first few clips look like BMX. Yeah. You know, it's BMX to me. Yeah. Like you're just doing it on my, a, on a, on a different bike. My, my goal I think was to do things that I wouldn't do on a BMX bike. Yeah. Like, yeah. I couldn't, but I mean, like everything's BMX. possible. I mean, that everything's been possible on a BMX bike. Yeah, I, I mean, you yeah, could do yeah. it, but would, would you it be want fun? to? Yeah, well, when you're 40, <laughs> definitely not. Yeah, all this, all of this was fun <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but yeah, there was that little clip, that little homie section of Jacob Lingham, and we were talking earlier about you know riding with younger riders. Mm -hmm. Like, do you ever feel like you're stale or like your bike's feeling weird? Like, ride with somebody who just kind of like got into it, and they don't, it, care. dude. It like ignites you. Yeah, you their just, per their percentage is completely yeah. different. Or you what can they absorb yeah. the energy. That was was that you? Yeah. It's yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I think his 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 facial hair yeah, is like throwing even, that, that everything didn't even off. Look like you. My mustache. It's not that. It's like the way it was together. I don't know. It just <laughs> There's your lawn tramp. <laughs> had to get back across the canyon. <laughs> Yeah, this, was this is one, nuts. Dude. Where the this, hell are you gonna? Put you could have won. You could have won the log ride at Swamp Fest last weekend. <laughs> that was so sick. That tree was just sitting there like that. It fell across there and, and it sat there it. for a year. That's and I crazy. was like sweating it for a year, and then randomly Ooh, they were so like sick. staging a telephone pole just up the road. It's like nearly the same like shape. Yeah. So for a week straight, awesome. I would go ride the telephone just down pole the for hours, and just locked in on it and went and sent it one day. There's G Bum. You guys remember G Bum? Mm. Mm. me and connor watch this together the other, say, TJ, yes. the other tj lavin the other oh the vegas kid oh. that worked yeah he's like my he's my best friend he works that specialized too damn this was scary this, this took is, me seven years to do this is not a bmx clip this nope, is this absolutely is this is what like all of your riding combined can you know oh make my this god if you flipped of, over on this cheese grater but it works so perfect it's all look. balls huh <laughs> I was convinced that if I touched my brakes, it would make me crash. So it was just brakeless, which was the scary part. You're probably right, honestly. Because it was like, yeah, floating, pitch, you, you, know? pitch you forward at all. Yeah. Same thing on the log ride. It was like no brakes because I was like, that's going to make my tire slip off. Yeah. Yeah, Alan. But like to be able to to use all of the things that I've learned and put them into those those moments like. And at 42 years old to make a part that probably is being looked up to by the younger generation of bikes. Hell yeah, yeah, dude, I was so that's off to that. This that's is by far awesome. my like proudest bike that's thing awesome. that I've filmed and done. Amazing. And it's a, uh, this is just a part in the whole video you guys made too, right? Or is it just one? Is it this just is an edit? just, yeah, this okay. is a, just an edit. Yeah. Sick. Yeah, it was, it was cool. And you know, the idea was to just kind of go back to the roots and do things like I didn't just, I didn't just put it on YouTube. At first, like I kind of took it on tour and like I would did you do a little premiere thing. We did a premiere in Santa Cruz. I did a premiere in Bellingham, like at a bar, like we had beer and that's awesome. Big event and it wasn't out yet. And that was the only way you could see it then. It was kind of cool to go back and do it in that way. And and then now it's out. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. All the pounds. Dude, it's it's sick to see you fucking happy in love with bikes. Dude, like, bikes are sick. Yeah. Like <laughs> Bikes are doing your sick. thing, doing crank flips in the forest. An amazing job opportunity. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? The clip was out there. It was just right Why there. wouldn't you? <laughs> family and then still to have the job, the family, and then still being able to be creative and get adrenaline rushes and yeah. progressing on a bike. Yeah. I You're mean, doing it, dude. You're uh, really doing it. Um, if you wrote these things out on paper, maybe it's not like a, uh, it wouldn't line, line up to someone's vision of success, but dude, I feel like I'm the most successful person I know because of all these experiences and these things that I've been able to do that each one lends into the next thing and it keeps me going, you know, and like that's allowed me never to forget all that other stuff and how important it was and how wrong I was in so many different occasions. Yeah. It's pretty cool to be able to be in the same venue and be able to use all that knowledge because like. How many people spend, you know, 10 years in BMX or maybe they work in the industry and then you hear like they're doing, you know, like this is not a bad thing. Yeah. Anyway, but like just Jay, departed. Yeah. Jay Miron, he went to do woodworking. You yeah. Know? Yeah. 
everything he learned in BMX, I'm sure a lot of that stuff mentality wise c- helps him with his woodworking stuff, discipline and you know, all that. But yeah. to be able to have this life, like multiple lifetimes collection of information that is beneficial on a daily basis that I can go back to. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Be proud, dude. You're pretty cool too. Dude. Curtis is proud of you. Thanks, Kurt. <laughs> thanks, Kurt Dobb. Dude, Alan, thank you for coming. I think we're, dude, thanks I for mean, we took me. a couple breaks, but three hours plus three forty right now. So, time flies. Yeah. So it's been a long time since one of, Whoa, Curtis wins. Curtis is like, get these <laughs> headphones off and pet me, man. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to all the sponsors, Dales, yeah. Woodward, Source BMX, mm-hmm. Ryan Fudger. That's me. Yeah, Alan dog. Cook, thank you. Dude, thank, thank you, you for hitting us yeah. up. Thanks, I appreciate Fudger. that. Anybody else want to come do it? All the mountain bikers and BMXers out there me. listening. I highly recommend love it. You. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. That thank was you, fun. Alan. Thank you. Thank All you, everyone right, out there. We love you. Oh, geez. Geez. Don't get too crazy. Heck yeah, that was awesome. Hi, Kurt. Hi, My best day. It's funny how you wake up. A few days.